You're listening to KJFM Louisiana Bowling Green. 1021 on your dial all day, every day. Eagle 102 KJFM Radio. Area High School Basketball is on the air. Every week, Eagle 102 brings you the best of area high school sports on air at 102.1, online at kjfmradio.com, and on the KJFM Radio app. Now to the court for high school basketball on your area sports leader, KJFM Radio. Gordon Sanders, Marianne Everhart broadcasting live from the Jake. Louisiana high school basketball action tonight. It's Hall of Fame night for Louisiana. There will be Hall of Fame inductees in between the two games. There's a little presentation that's being put on a presentation, yeah. a, uh, a feed, if there, you will, there is, and uh, uh, beforehand. Some plaques that will be taking place. So we saw some of those as we got to walk in. So if you're headed to the game tonight, uh, make sure you check out those plaques out in the hallway of the uh, the inductees. Um, that, as we mentioned, will be taking place between games. Might note, uh, we mentioned it during Eagle 102 Sports earlier. Um, there has been a little slight change into the inductees um, is where Jim Scott will actually be inducted next year um, due to his family not being able to come here and be here because of the weather and it was very important to them which we understand completely why it would be um, that they want to be here to be see this induction so um, unfortunately he will be I shouldn't even say unfortunately because they're just going to move it to next year to accommodate um, the family and make sure that they are able to witness such a neat a neat process correct J- Jim Scott passed away in 2017 so um, his family really looking forward to being here Absolutely. as he he loved his time here in Louisiana, loved his time with him as a member of the Louisiana Bulldogs. He went on, spent his his career in sports. It was about faith, family, and football was the quote that was associated yes. to Jim Scott. Um, and he coached, spent time in Missouri, spent time in Texas. And you know, that, you know, all of that was a huge part of him being a Louisiana Bulldog. And so his family's wanting to be here Absolutely. for that induction ceremony. And so... Jim Scott will be going into the Hall of Fame next year. That's right. So we already have one inductee set for uh, next year's class. But we'll touch on the inductees for this year's class coming up, as we mentioned, between games. First, we've got the Wellsville uh, Middletown Lady Tigers taking on the host, Louisiana Lady Bulldogs. We'll break it all down for you during the Bowling Green Pharmacy pregame show next here on Eagle 102. As many as 50% of people don't take their medication as prescribed. Some never even fill their prescription, even if they don't feel well. Missing or not taking medication can be deadly. For questions about medication, your local Health Mart Pharmacy is here to help. For fast, friendly service and affordable prices every day, visit your local Health Mart Pharmacy, Bowling Green Pharmacy, located right on the square at 8 North Court in Bowling Green. This is Tracy Brookshire with Pike County Health Department Home Health and Hospice. Did you know our agency currently offers over 30 programs and services to our communities? The Women, Infant, and Children's Program, Infant through Adult Immunizations, Car Seat Safety Courses, Diabetes Counseling, and of course our amazing Home Health and Hospice programs, just to name a few. Learn more by visiting our website at pikecountyhealth.org and see what services you and your family could benefit from. Your car, your stuff, your savings. Combine your auto and renter's insurance with a call this State Farm Insurance Agent Cindy Blaylock in Louisiana and let Cindy show you how to put life back in your life insurance. Auto, home, and life. Make your wallet happy. Here to help life go right, State Farm Insurance Agent Cindy Blaylock in Louisiana. One multi-sports complex in Bowling Green is your year-round indoor facility to get your softball and baseball work in. Call Courtney at 573-324-2193 or Matthew at 573-324-8282 to schedule an appointment and to inquire about memberships. One multi-sports complex just off BFW Road in Bowling Green. Hear all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth. Sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. It's time now for the Eagle 102 pregame show. Sponsored by Bowling Green Pharmacy. Gordon Sanders, Marianne Everhart broadcasting live from Louisiana High School this evening. Two games on tap we mentioned just moments ago. The first, it's the Louisiana Lady Bulldogs against the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers. And Louisiana just uh, picked up their fifth win of the season uh, earlier. No, last week. My days are already confused as to where we're at. They picked it up last week against North Point. So uh, 
you know, they, they did some things. They, they had some great strides coming out of the Clopton Invitational Tournament. Kind of took a little bit of a step back, I think, uh, the week of the Bowling Green Invitational Tournament, but then came right back out, picked up that fifth win of the season. Um, ran into a tough Clopton school squad earlier this week, but are looking to rebound here as well today against Wellsville Middletown. The Louisiana Lady Bulldogs, a very, very young ball club. I mean, it's you, you hear that from time to time, but this would be the definition of that, the entire team, freshman and sophomore. That's right. And so, you know, they're going to do nothing but to continue to improve each and every year. Um, the one thing that is a little bit of a concern uh, this year is, or this game, I should say, might be a little bit of a might, uh, height matchup as it looks from our viewpoint up in the, uh, we'll call it the crow's nest, way up here in the uh, the weight room up above the stands, it looks like Wellsville Middletown may have a little bit of a height advantage over the Lady Bulldogs. We'll have to see if that comes into play a little bit later this evening. So as we go through the course of the ball game, we'll let you know a little bit more about the, the different players, the matchups that we're seeing this evening, and we'll talk more about the squads as they're developing. We talked about the... Um, youth of the Louisiana Lady Bulldogs. Much the same for the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers. They have one junior on their squad, one senior on their squad representing, no, scratch that, two juniors, one senior, and the rest of the squad is sophomore and freshman as well. So this probably will be a close game as far as points go. Um, it's probably not going to be a, a, a finesse game by any means, but uh, we should see some, some of these younger players definitely getting plenty of court time, and it'll be kind of fun to watch the two continue to uh, grow over the next couple of years. And as you see on that coaching carousel, some familiar faces. Yeah, definitely. As a, uh, for the uh, Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers, uh, uh, Todd Kripe is the, we've seen him in a couple different locations. Of course, he was with the state team for the Vanfar Indians way back in time now. Uh, seems like forever ago. And, of course, uh, Steve Lassman was a coach here at Louisiana. He's the boys coach for Wellsville Middletown. Yeah, so some familiar names, familiar faces. And basketball action on a Saturday. This game originally was supposed to be played on Friday. Of course, due to the weather, it was yeah. bumped a day. Reminding you, if you're out and about headed this direction in places, the roads are still less than spectacular. They are. Make sure you're uh, careful coming in and make sure you take caution, uh, especially this evening as the temperatures begin to drop and all that wonderful slush starts to freeze. Again, it's a nice time for us to give a shout-out to all those. Uh, those. I think the, the term was those who plowed. Uh, over the last couple days and, and tried to get some roads passable for all of us so we can get out and do the things we love. We appreciate all your hard work. Yeah, a lot of folks were, were running on 48-plus hours straight of of doing all of that, making sure roads were taken care of. And, and again, hats off to all of you who do that and are continuing to do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. As we've seen them out. We'll have more high school basketball action headed your direction. Eagle 102 Sports, Game of the Week, wrapping up this week on Eagle 102. It's a great time to buy or sell a home. I'm Vicki Cadwalder, and I take pride in offering skills that make the process go smoothly from beginning to end. Even after closing, I enjoy staying in touch and being there to help you if you have any other needs or questions. During the process, I'll work closely with your lender and other professionals to make it as effortless as possible. I'm here with you every step of the way, so when you're ready to buy or sell, call me and we'll create a personalized plan just for you. Vicki Cadwalder Real Estate, loving our small town life. Bowling Green Tractor wants to change the way you think about yard work with their Ego 56-volt Arc Lithium Battery-Powered Lawn Mowers, Weed Eaters, Blowers, Trimmers, and Chainsaws. At Bowling Green Tractor, you can walk in and see for yourself just how e easy these products are to handle. Bowling Green Tractor, your home for Ego. Power beyond belief. As many as 50% of people don't take their medication as prescribed. Some never even fill their prescription, even if they don't feel well. Missing or not taking medication can be deadly. For questions about medication, your local HealthMart Pharmacy is here to help. For fast, friendly service and affordable prices every day, visit your local HealthMart Pharmacy, Bowling Green Pharmacy, located right on the square at 8 North Court in Bowling Green. Time now for the Eagle 102 Keys to the Game on KJFM, sponsored by Vicki Cadwallader Real Estate in Louisiana. Well, we talked a little bit earlier when it comes to the keys of the game. Both of these are young ball clubs. So a lot of the a lot of the things that you have to put a spotlight on with the young team, exactly what they're going to have to focus on. Absolutely. Both teams are going to have to take care of the basketball. Um, you know, we've seen it uh, from a lot of young squads. Well, we see it for every young squad. When you have uh, young girls out there, they get anxious. They try to rush passes. They don't always come to meet their passes. Um, they try to push the ball a little too quickly. And, and really those are – just those young mistakes, but they're going to have to take care of them tonight and cut down on those turnovers. Uh, Louisiana's going to have to see some uh, control 
uh, out there from Emily Powell, Ty Campbell, um, Reagan Bowser, a, a few, just to name a few that are going to have to step up. Uh, Jay Larice has stepped in, come off the, come off and, and put out some valuable minutes, but they're going to have to take care of that basketball, have to calm down a little bit, and make sure to run their offense the way Coach Derek Brandstetter r- wrote it up for them. The uh, Wellsville Lady Tigers, if they've got a size advantage and it appears yeah. that they do, they're going to have to take advantage of that rolling through the game. Well, that's kind of what I was going to point out for them. They're going to have to get in there, and they're going to have to do a lot of blocking out when it comes to these rebounds. Louisiana has proven this season that they can be scrappy when they want to be, uh, can get in there, get those rebounds, um, and and pull those loose basketballs away. So Wellsville Middletown, I think tonight the key for them is they're going to have to match Louisiana's scrappiness. Um, Louisiana gets in. They fight for the loose basketballs. They've really worked on blocking out underneath the basket, taking those second-chance shots, um, and, and making something happen. So Really, Wellsville Middletown is just going to have to look for taking advantage of Louisiana's mistakes tonight. So Your keys of the game for the Louisiana Lady Bulldogs, Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers. We've got more on the way. Basketball action. We've got about five minutes on the clock. We'll have two games tonight. Varsity girls play Louisiana against Wellsville Middletown, followed by varsity boys play in between the Hall of Fame induction ceremony for Louisiana High School. And we'll have a little bit more on that coming up as well. You're listening to High School Basketball Action on KJFM Radio. Hello, this is Brittany Hinkey with Community State Bank of Missouri. Now is the perfect time to start saving for retirement. Community State Bank offers competitive rates on traditional and Roth IRAs. Unlike most investments, some contributions may be tax deductible and will grow either tax deferred or tax free. Come in and see one of our IRA representatives in Troy or Bowling Green to maximize your savings opportunities today. Community State Bank of Missouri, your hometown community bank since 1887, member FDIC. Hey, this is Ryan with Mid-America Auto and Towing in Bowling Green, and we've got the lot looking good and ready to go. We've got something for everybody's budget. We have a constant rotation of new inventory, including cars, trucks, and SUVs. So if you're out and you're looking for a new car, come by and see me. Mid-America Auto and Towing, just off Highway 54 in Bowling Green, is a one-stop shop. Like us on Facebook or check out our website, midamericaautoandtowing.com. I'm Tylee Mills, the CEO of Pike County Memorial Hospital. You've heard it from your friends, family, and even neighbors. They choose Pike County Memorial Hospital. Quality care from quality people. Pike County Memorial Hospital. As many as 50% of people don't take their medication as prescribed. Some never even fill their prescription, even if they don't feel well. Missing or not taking medication can be deadly. For questions about medication, your local Health Mart Pharmacy is here to help for fast, friendly service and affordable prices every day. Visit your local Health Smart Pharmacy, Bowling Green Pharmacy, located right on the square at 8 North Court in Bowling Green. The Eagle 102 starting lineups on KJFM are sponsored by Community State Bank of Missouri in Bowling Green and Troy. We'll start with the home team on the scoreboard this evening. Of course, the uh, Louisiana Lady Bulldogs in their home white jerseys with uh, I believe black numbers and cardinal red trim, or it's cardinal red trim with black numbers. Uh, memory escapes me. I haven't, haven't seen too many of the home jerseys this year. So uh, starting for them, we have a 5'5 freshman wearing number one, Jordan Pedersen. A 5'7 sophomore wearing number five, Ty Campbell. A 5'9 sophomore wearing number 10, Reagan Bowser. A 5'7 sophomore wearing number 23, Depresia Chapman. And a 5'7 sophomore, we're number 25, Emily Powell. And we will check on uh, Wellsville Middletown starting lineups a little bit closer to uh, time. As we mentioned, Louisiana comes into tonight's contest with a 5 and 13 record. Going up against the Wellsville Middletown squad that is 4 and 10 on the season, Gordon. So probably pretty evenly matched. Uh, fairly well matched, and we talked about it before, the youth of both squads. You've only got three upperclassmen on the court at all between both teams absolutely um, coming into the ball game so um, shifting gears just a little bit we were talking about the hall of fame induction ceremony Uh uh-huh so that's going to be taking place between games Um, there is a team being inducted plus there are also a number of individuals you know this team that you're talking about we seem to have given them a lot of credit over the years something about winning a state championship or something The uh, 1986 (laughs) Louisiana Bulldogs football team um, did win a state championship, and there are going to be many people who are who are out on the floor, part of that team, who would tell you that I was key in there being a state championship. That you yourself were key. Yeah, by by me not going out for the (laughs) team, it gave them an opportunity. I was I was going to ask if to do what they did. If I was going to have to fill in while you went down and, and. it stood with the rest of the team for recognition. Uh, you will not. But it was actually senior year, high school, uh, graduated in 1987. 
Louisiana Bulldogs. Yeah. 86 was the football team that won the state championship, which, you know, tied to, you know, you've seen, we've seen time and time again how how that success on the court, on the field, on the track, um, on the links, wh- wherever it comes sure. from, kind of spills over into the rest of the class. It kind of defines your your senior year, your high school time. Yeah, some of us have, um, you know, beating Louisiana as, as a great memory from their senior year. <laughs> so depending on, you know, exactly where you graduated from, where you went to school, so we'll get into more on the inductions coming yep, up. We're waiting to see. I believe that they're going to do the national anthem. So uh, we're just going to wait and double check real quick. Um, they're doing the nice P- Misha PSA announcements. that reminds us all to be good sports. Yeah. See, Gordon told you to be a good sportsman. That's handy. That Sometimes handy. those reminders are necessary. Sometimes they are. I tell you what, she does a good job of reading that PA. Like she might do morning announcements every day or something. So a nice crowd on hand already coming in this evening from both sides. We are going to do the national anthem. We'll step aside. We'll be back with your starting lineups and opening tip next. You're on Eagle 102. Is it time to renew, redo, or rebuild? I'm Christine Rutherford, and we have loans designed specifically for repairs and renovations, along with home equity lines of credit. People's Bank and Trust, member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, MLO number 421603, NMLS number 407724. When you support a locally owned pharmacy, you're contributing to the growth of the community. The dollars you spend stay right here to support our local community. HealthMart pharmacies are locally owned pharmacies. There's one right here. HealthMart pharmacists have a personal commitment to their communities because just like you, they support their community. HealthMart pharmacies are locally owned and hometown proud. Louisiana is a HealthMart town. Family drug HealthMart pharmacy. The right people, the right price, right downtown. Healthmark, caring for you and about you. Bundle at Pike County Mutual Insurance and save. Ask about the great rates on your personal vehicle, farm trucks, big or small, or even your motorcycle and side-by-sides. Stop by and see myself, Corey Buchanan, or Kathy Gam at your hometown insurance company since 1895. Pike County Mutual Insurance on the square in Bowling Green. High school sports on your area sports leader, Eagle 102. Brought to you by Bowling Green Tractor, Vicki Cadwalder Real Estate, and Ingram Plumbing. Well, Gordon, I kind of feel like maybe we owe our audiences a little bit of an apology. Um, I did not realize we were going to have a young lady sing that for us, and she did an absolute beautiful job. So uh, we've got the starting lineups for the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers. They're starting number two, Haley Guzzi. What a mess. Uh, Carly Henderson wearing number three. Bethany Slavinsky. A junior, number one, number five, Natalie Bockelman. And then Janelle Bockelman, who wears number 20. And I believe we're probably getting ready to turn off the lights here for the uh, Louisiana introduction, so bear with us as they bring out the lights. Following suit, as you've seen in recent years, making it more of a presentation, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. I got to admit, I kind of like the production. If you remember back a few years, the first time I remember high schools in this area, the um, Quincy Blue Devils, yeah. if you've ever been to a Quincy game, yeah. like Flaming Torch and yeah. Mascot, and by Mascot, uh, normally a gentleman from the wrestling team or a football player or somebody who has just the cape, the Blue Devil mask, the trident with the flames and stuff heading out. Well, the starting introductions have been made, and we are uh, we are ready for high school basketball. I'm not sure what all they had to have. Uh, looks like Miss Chapman go remove some earrings. She must have had an earring in. So we are ready for high school basketball here from the Jake this Saturday afternoon evening. Looks like jumping center. We're going to have Bowser. Tip is up. And controlling it's going to be Wellsville Middletown. Lady Tigers bringing the ball across half court, looking to set things up on offense. Right side back up to the top of the key, swing it around to the left of the arc. Right now just working it around the perimeter would be Wellsville Middletown. Louisiana playing his own defense. 
And it looks like uh, Chapman got in there already reading that offense, looking to break up the play as they're trying to feed the ball down low into Henderson. Ball goes out of bounds, and Wellsville Middletown will have it now under their own basket over on the far side. Wellsville inbounds the ball, gets it in, out, continues to work it around, looking for something offensively, but taking their time to find it, while Louisiana, again, just kind of adjusts to their zone defense. And they're really going from a 1-2-2 two, two to a 3-2 here, and uh, Louisiana looking to force their first turnover, balls loose, and as we mentioned before, Chapman took it away. Louisiana's got it, coming across half court, Emily Powell, she's picked up right away by Wellsville Middletown, loses the ball with the steal, driving, putting up the shot off the glass, no good that time would be Slavinsky getting the rebound, was Guzzi, and she's fouled. That'll be the first team foul out there. That's going to go on Ty Campbell, her first team's first. And it's going to get her first free throws of the evening as well. At the free throw line is the freshman, Haley Guzzi. Shots up off the back of the rim, no good. Jim Ross and I talked about this before. She has nice long hair that covers her number there, so we're trying to <laughs> keep some of them straight. Eyes the second free throw. It's up and good. Wellsville Middletown takes the first lead of the ball game as they're up 1-0. Full court pressure by the Lady Tigers. Bowser gets it across half court, tries to get the pass in down low to Depresia Chapman. It goes off her hands out of bounds. So Wellsville Middletown will bring it back up the court and have no pressure from the Lady Bulldogs as they fall back into their 1-2-2 zone defense. Slavinsky handling the ball. She goes right side to Bachelman. Janelle Bockelman now back and forth at the top of the key between Guzzi and Bockelman. Stolen away by Reagan Bowser. Trying to get the ball to Campbell. Loose ball on the floor being fought for. And Bowser gets the ball into the hands that time of Campbell. And then out of bounds. Last touch by the Bulldogs. Already a substitution coming in as uh, Hall subs in now for Wellsville Middletown's uh, Bockelman. So... That's Natalie that takes a seat. Janelle still in. Inbounding the ball, bringing it across half court, setting things up for the Lady Tigers. Trying to go down low on the blocks. Ball's batted away. Coming away with it for Louisiana is Jordan Peterson, and she's fouled. Peterson got fouled on the uh, as she moved across, and that's going to be the first foul on Slavoski. I think I said that correctly. Well, it's going to be Powell getting the ball into Peterson. Back to Powell, Powell's trap. Looks to go back up top to Pedersen. Inside to Bowser, back out to Campbell. And Louisiana's gonna try to set things up and move it around on offense. Ball knocked out of bounds that time by the Lady Tigers. Well, I think Coach Kripe at the end of the bench kind of acted like maybe he wanted a, wanted a chance to play as well, and they s shot it his way. Bulldogs inbound the ball. Campbell with it now up top to Pedersen. Right side, goes inside to Bowser. Bowser's double team. Ball knocked away. She comes back with the ball, then kicks it back out. And Louisiana's going to try to work around on offense. Back inside to Bowser, puts it up off the glass. Rebound pulled down that time by the Lady Tigers. That's the size you were talking about it before, was. the junior Carly Henderson. And the Tigers are going to throw it away when looking to set up their offense. Louisiana now inbound the basketball between the scorer's table and their own bench. As we mentioned, we're high above the scorer's table and benches here in the weight room as Powell gets it into Pedersen. Back to Powell, cross half court. She's trapped, gets it back up top to Pedersen, to Campbell, back to Pedersen, who's up between the arc and half court. Skip pass cross court to Campbell. He's looking inside, goes back to Powell. Powell's going to drive into the paint, put up an off-balance shot, goes off the glass, no good, rebound. Lady Tigers, uh, she might have been tripped up a little bit as she was going into the paint to alter that shot, but no foul was called, and Louisiana's going to be inbounding the ball. Jump ball call, possession arrow stays with the Lady Dogs as they get it right into Powell. Powell drives to the elbow, now kicks it out. The Lady Bulldogs working around, getting it back into the hand of Powell, who sees a cutting Campbell and puts it off the glass. No good. Out of bounds, last touch by the Lady Tigers. So Louisiana keeps control of the basketball under their own basket on the far side. Looks like Bowser will have the inbound duties. Bowser gets in, three-point shot up off the rim. No good. Missed shot by Pedersen, fighting for the rebound that time was Chapman. Ball went out of bounds, last touch by the Bulldogs. 
and the Lady Tigers are going to set things up on offense as they bring it across half court. Handling the ball, Slavinsky at the top of the key as she's going back and forth. The Louisiana Lady Tigers moving around. Loose ball now. Campbell comes away with it. And we're going to have another jump ball, and the possession arrows back to the Lady Dogs. Keegan Hall, the freshman, was the one who lost control of it for the Lady Tigers. Returning to the basketball games, Natalie Bachman coming in for Henderson for the Lady Tigers. Louisiana gets it across half court. Pedersen trying to get it to Bowser. Knocked away. The Lady Tigers now in transition. Looking to drive and put up a shot. Instead, Slavinsky loses the ball out of bounds. Back to the dogs we go. one nothing. our score with 4.35 to go on the clock in the first quarter of play. Full court pressure now from uh, Wellsville. Quick timeout for Pedersen to tie her shoes. At full court pressure, Louisiana gets it in. Bowser gets it across half court quickly up to Chapman. Chapman off the glass, and it's good. First lead of the night for Louisiana, 2-1. to one. Louisiana efficiently breaking the press that time. As the Tigers look to set things up on offense, Bowser going for the steal. Goes out of bounds. Last touch by Reagan Bowser. That pass from Natalie Bockelman was intended to her sister, Janelle Bockelman. Bryland Stewart and Jalea Reese check in the basketball game now for the Lady Dogs. Wellsville inbounds the ball. Three-point shot right wing put up no good by Guzzi. Rebound collected that time by Keegan Hall, who puts up the shot. It's no good, but she's fouled. And that's going to – they call it on Stewart, her first. As Hall's at the free throw line for a first of two. Or I guess that's Buckleman that there. Nope, I was right. No, I think you were right. Yep, Keegan Hall. Yep, I was looking at the wrong line. First free throw shot was up and good. Eyes her second and a chance to take the lead. It's up and it's in. So the Lady Tigers are up 3-2. Louisiana inbounding the ball. Still full court pressure from Wellsville Middletown. Trying to get the ball from Pedersen to Bowser. Goes off her hands, and the Lady Tigers come away with it. Turnovers or something both teams are going to have to pay attention to. We'll probably talk about in the uh, at halftime in the locker room. Wellsville Middletown inbounds the ball. They bring it across half court. Going inside now to Kripe, who has the ball go out of bounds. Went off her hands. Last touch by the Lady Tigers. Chapman and Powell return for Bowser and Campbell for the Lady Bulldogs. Megan Kripe wears number 40. She's a sophomore, coach's daughter. Louisiana looking to break the press again, trying to get the ball now, and they do across half court. That was Reese with the ball. Now the Louisiana Lady Bulldogs continue to work it around. Patterson to Powell. Powell's up at the top of the key. She's got Reese left side. Back to Patterson to Powell. Skip pass cross course cross court from Reese to Pedersen. Pedersen puts up the shot, no good, comes away with the rebound, and it's going to be called a jump ball possession arrow in favor of Wellsville Middletown. So Louisiana falls back into half court defense again and gives Wellsville a clear shot across the timeline. Lady Tigers bringing it cross court. Setting things up on the offense, working around the perimeter. Three-point shot off the glass, no good. That shot by Haley Guzzi. And it's another jump ball. This time back to Louisiana. 3-2 is the score with 3.13 on the clock in the first quarter of play. Still full court pressure from the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers. Powell with the ball trying to get to Patterson. Powell's going to be called for the travel. And she drug her back pivot foot as she was trying to split the defenses there on a pass. So Wellsville inbounds the ball. Slavinsky, she goes right side. Now back to Slavinsky, trying to go inside to Kripe. And the foul's going to be called inside. Looks like it's going to go against. Reese, it'll be her first, team's third, team's fourth. Quick inbounds pass. Again, trying to get in to Kripe. Stolen away that time. Louisiana coming away with the ball. Depresha Chapman with the steal. Powell trying to get it across half court. Double team. 
Stolen, Slavinsky with it. She's going to drive into the paint, put up the runner. Off the glass, no good. Loose ball being fought for. Reese coming away with it. Reese gets it down in front of her to Pedersen. Pedersen drives, puts it off the glass. Good for two. Jordan Pedersen in the books tonight and gives the Lady Dogs back a one-point lead, makes it 4-3 to three with 2.30 to go here in the first. Lady Tigers try to feed Kripe inside. Kripe kicks it back out. Continuing to swing it around. Slavinsky will take the open three-pointer from the left wing. No good. Rebound crashing the boards that time. That shot put up. It was no good. The hustle that time coming from Keegan Hall, the freshman. Freshman got the rebound, missed the shot, and then threw it off the leg of a Louisiana Lady Bulldog player. Out of bounds, Louisiana. And the Lady Tigers will now inbound and look to set things up again on offense. Into Slavinsky. She looks to drive, loses the ball but it went off the legs of a Louisiana player. So Chapman's uh, thigh must have got a touch on there before it hit out of bounds. So the Lady Tigers will inbound one more time. And Slavinsky tries to bounce the ball inside, looking to go to Carly Henderson. And out of bounds again. Lady Tigers inbounding one more time. This time they get in right side. Danny Hager now up top to Slavinsky. At the free throw line, back Hager. Slavinsky going to take the three-point shot off the front of the rim. No good. Rebound Henderson. I think we probably should have made this a, a, a different type of game where, I don't know, maybe we have a, a nachos or something every time we have a jump ball. Awarded points for jump balls would have worked out well. 4-3 is the score. Louisiana leads. 158 to go in the first quarter of play. You're listening to Bulldogs basketball action on Eagle 102. The Mercantile Bank of Louisiana is introducing Merc BK Mobile with the ability to take a picture of your check and deposit it into your Mercantile Bank account. You'll never have to worry about getting to the bank. Find more information by visiting MercBK.com. The Mercantile Bank, located on the corner of 3rd and Georgia Streets in downtown Louisiana. Member FDIC. The most complete coverage of high school sports on Eagle 102. Brought to you by Mid-America Auto and Towing. The Mercantile Bank and Pike County Mutual Insurance. The Louisiana Bulldogs are going to be guarding the inbounds pass coming from Haley Guzzi. She gets into Slavinsky, top of the key, back to Guzzi, left wing. Guzzi to Slavinsky again at the top of the key. Still his own defense from the Bulldogs. Three-point shot put up off the rim. No good. Fighting for the rebound is Chapman, but it's the Wellsville, Lady, the Wellsville Milltown Lady Tigers who come away with it. Now a shot put up from the right elbow. No good by Hager. Rebound Louisiana. Emily Powell with the ball. Looking to get it past half court. She's trapped. Gets it to Campbell. Campbell to Bowser. Bowser's going to drive. She puts up the shot. No foul called. Loose ball rebound coming away to the Lady Tigers, who now quickly push it across half court. Guzzi with it. Then back to Slavinsky. The offense obviously runs through Bethany Slavinsky at the top of the key. Wellsville looking to set things up. Back to Guzzi, to Slavinsky. 4-3 is our score with 109 left to go in the first quarter of play. Slavinsky puts up the three-point shot. It's no good. Off the left side of the rim and coming away with the rebound that time is Depresha Chapman. Chapman just beat the, uh, beat the defense there, and now it looks like Louisiana is going to throw the ball away. A little bit lighter pressure that time from the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers, but the Bulldogs weren't able to quite get it across half court. The pass from Pedersen going over Chapman and out of bounds. So at the opposite end of the court, the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers will inbound. Slavinsky brings it across half court, looks to set things up on offense, goes right side to Hager, now back left side, skip pass cross court, back into the hands of Hager, who's going to now put up a shot. It's no good. Looks like it was partially blocked. Henderson getting the rebound under the basket, tied up. Yeah, another jump ball. We may have more jump balls than we do points on the board. It's 4-3, to three, our score. Dogs on top by one. Just about 30 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Still full court pressure from the Lady Tigers. Pass to Campbell, now to Bowser. Bowser quickly crossed half court. Pulls up around the free throw line, gets it to Pedersen. Pedersen back to Chapman. Emily Powell from the top of the arc. Shot no good. Rebound, Wellsville Middletown. Driving is Slavinsky. Puts the shot up, partially blocked. Rebound was Pedersen, came away with it that time. Now to Chapman, to, to Campbell. Campbell trying to get it to Powell, getting a hand on it that time was Hager. And Wellsville Middletown came away with the ball, and Louisiana is going to commit the foul. And that's uh, Emily Powell's first foul, but team's fifth here with eight seconds to go in the first. 
Depresia Chapman walking with just a little bit of a hobble coming away from that play. Slavinsky now goes left side to Hager, back up top to Slavinsky. A deep three-pointer at the buzzer. No good. After one quarter of play, Louisiana leads Wellsville Middletown 4-3. You're listening to Eagle 102 Sports High School Basketball Action from Louisiana on KJFM Radio. Ingram Plumbing has always been known for its outstanding plumbing service. But did you know that Ingram's is also the largest retail plumbing supply store in the area? We carry Delta faucets, a complete line of Whirlpool tubs and showers, jacuzzi pumps, and many other specialty items. Stop by Ingram Plumbing today, Highway 61, Bowling Green. Farmers, the crew at Mike's Tire and Service Center is here to serve you. They know the hours you put in, which makes it difficult to get that equipment in for service. Therefore, they offer on-the-farm tire repair. Hi, folks. My name is Cody Kirkendall, Mike's Tire and Service Center, located on Business Highway 61 in Bowling Green. Bringing you all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth, sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. Gordon Sanders, Marion Everhart broadcasting from Louisiana High School, getting ready for quarter number two. The Louisiana Lady Bulldogs have a 4-3 lead after a first quarter that saw a lot of hustle going after the ball. Yeah, we saw a lot of jump balls. Um, again, we may have had more than seven jump balls there in the first quarter. It's quite possible. It's quite possible. So Louisiana with one-point lead as we're going into the second quarter. The Lady Tigers inbound the ball and work the ball around on the right side of the court. Guzzi with it down baseline right now as we head back up to the top of the key. Slavinsky not in the game right now for Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers. Janelle Bachelman seems to be handling the ball at the top of the key. Skip pass back up to her. Coach Kripe calling out the offense. Stolen away that time by Pedersen. She drives, puts the ball off the glass. It's good. And Louisiana's up 6-3. So that's Louisiana's largest lead of the night at three. It's just largest lead of by anybody. Haley Guzzi with the ball. Now we're going inside to Hager. Kicks it back out to Guzzi. Guzzi going to Kripe, who's operating near the free throw line but just looking to pass the ball around and find an open shot, apparently, at this point in time. Bockelman swings around to the top of key, into Kripe, out to Guzzi. Guzzi puts up the three-pointer, and it's good, and now we have a tie ball game. First three of the night. No full-court pressure after the basket. They just drop back. 6-6 is our score. Second quarter just underway. Pedersen tries to go to Bowser, who's operating near the free-throw line, goes back to Powell. Powell drives in, kicks it out to Pedersen. Pedersen swings around to the top of the key. Now to Powell, to Chapman. Inside to Bowser, is guarded by the much bigger Kripe. Bowser tries to put up the shot. It's blocked. She's going for the loose ball, and it goes out of bounds. Last touch by Bowser. So Louisiana had eight turnovers in the first quarter. Up to see if they can bring that number down here in the second. Lady Tigers set things up on offense. Hager has it go off the side of her head, but holds on to it. Now stolen away again by Chapman. Chapman drives, puts the ball off the glass. No good rebound, Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers. So stolen away last two times, exact same point there in the offense, trying to work the ball to the right side. Almost the third one. Now inside to Kripe. Ball goes out of bounds. Looks like it went off the foot that time of Keegan Hall. So Louisiana knows exactly what they're yeah, looking for they on defense. Yeah, they've really started to read that offense of Wallsville's pretty well. So Coach Kripe may have to change that up a little bit here in this, in, uh, well, at least at, in halftime. 6-6 six, six is the score right now. Louisiana looking to set things up again on offense. Campbell with the three-point shot off the back of the rim. No good. Lady Tigers come away with the rebound. Slavinsky's back into the ball game. Quickly up court. Looks to put up the shot. Good defense from Emily Powell who comes away with the ball, and then she's fouled. That'll be Slavinsky second. Team second, so she has both fouls for Wellsville Middletown. Coach Kripe with a few words for Slavinsky. Louisiana getting it across half court easily. Powell to Patterson. Pedersen back to her left to Powell. Powell's going to drive into the paint. Wanted to try to get it to Bowser. Lost control. Lady Tigers come away with it. They're going to try to quickly push things up court. Bockelman now decides to back it back out. Gets it to Slavinsky. They set up their offense again. Bockelman three-point shot. Hits the front of the rim. Doesn't go in. Bowser comes away with the loose ball rebound. She gets it to Chapman. 
Back to Bowser, crossed half court. Bowser gets it to Powell. And Powell's going to swing around to the right side of the top of the key. Now back left to Pedersen. And the Louisiana Lady Bulldogs still working around outside. Ty Campbell will take the three-pointer from the left-hand side. And, and it's good. Yep, she drains it. Lady Tigers again working around outside the arc. Slavinsky now up top is Guzzi. Bockelman steps in, takes the shot, air ball no good. Depresia Chapman coming away with the rebound. Emily Powell's bringing it across half court for Louisiana. Season opening in the paint, it's gonna drive, put it off the glass, no good. Kripe with the rebound. Kripe gets it to Guzzi. Guzzi skips it ahead to Slavinsky. Slavinsky's gonna drive, put up the shot. Blocked, out of bounds by Powell. 9-6 our score, Louisiana on top of Wellsville by three. 4.05 to go here in the half. Inbounding the ball, Wellsville Middletown. Slavinsky down the right-hand corner that time, going to Guzzi, to Bachelman, uh, looking to go into the paint, loose ball. Lady Bulldogs coming away with it that time. Emily Powell, she's gonna bring it across half court. Skips it to Campbell. Trying to go inside, loose ball, fighting for it that time as Reese knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Bockelman, Janelle Bockelman of the Lady Tigers. So Louisiana will inbound the basketball right in front of the head of Wellsville's bench. Reese was the trigger man, got it into Powell. Loose ball being fought for. And Powell's trying to get a hold of it before it goes out of bounds. She does not, and it's Wellsville Middletown's ball. Bryland Stewart's in the game for Louisiana. Where's number 21? She's a six-foot sophomore. They tried to go to her in the paint on that last trip. Three-point shot's going to be put up by Bockelman. Air ball, no good. Out of bounds. Last touch that time by Keegan Hall, who was trying to hold on to it. Couldn't find a handle. So it's back to Louisiana ball. 9-6 is our score with 3.15 to go in the second quarter of play. Reese gets it to Powell as soon as Powell crosses half court. Left side to Chapman, back to Powell, back to Chapman. Chapman looking to go inside that time to Stewart. Loses the ball. Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers come away with it. Slovinsky's going to bring it across half court. And Louisiana's dropped into a 2-3 zone now. Slavinsky's going to drive, put up the runner, in and out, no good. Rebound, though, Lady Tigers. Shots up, no good by Natalie Bockelman, coming away with the rebound, Powell. And Powell's going to swing around to the top of the key and set things up for Louisiana. Gives up her dribble, goes right side to Reese. Now down the corner to Bowser, quickly inside to Stewart. Stewart brings the ball down and gets wrapped up. Possession arrow is going to be in favor of Louisiana. Well, actually, in favor of Wellsville Middletown. Or are they changing it? Oh, no, maybe the Wellsville Milltown girls just misunderstood. But really, the girls have got to keep the ball up above their waist. Inbounds pass to Powell. They're going to drive towards the paint, then kick it out to Campbell. Now back to Powell. She goes right side to Reese, down the corner to Bowser. Bowser back to Reese. Back to Powell, was at the top of the key. Goes free throw line to Stewart. Now to Bowser, who's going to cut in, lay the ball up and off the glass. Good for two. Bowser in the score books tonight gives them the largest lead of the night at five. 11-6 our score with exactly two minutes to go in the first half of play. Lady Tigers try to go into the paint. There's an open shot there just inside the free throw line. Natalie Bachelman puts it up. It's no good. Gets her own rebound. Puts it up again. No good again. Henderson fighting for a rebound along with Stewart. And, and what would be the call uh, again? I think that was a jump ball. Was it a jump ball? It was a jump ball. And Possibly uh, not our first of the no. evening. No, Pedersen and Chapman return for Bowser and Campbell for the Lady Dogs. Guzzi inbounding the ball. She gets into Hager. Hager's quickly double teamed back to Guzzi. Throws into Henderson. A little too far under the basket. Coming away with the rebound that time was Pedersen. She's given up her dribble. Gets it to Reese. Reese quickly up to Powell. Powell just outside the arc. Now back to Pedersen near the top of the key. 
Skip pass to Reese, left side. She tries to go inside to Stewart. She's not able to collect it. It's Henderson instead of the Lady Tigers who comes away with the loose ball. And Wellsville Middletown will come across half court. Down to a minute 18 to go here in the half. Don't forget we'll have your Sailor and Satellite Center halftime report coming up in just a few moments. Skip pass cross court to Bockelman, who'll put up the three-point shot off the rim. No good. Louisiana doing a good job of blocking out, though Henderson comes away with the ball, and she gets quickly wrapped up. Ty Campbell returning now for Emily Powell. Stewart, Campbell, Chapman, also Patterson and Reese on the court for the Lady Bulldogs. Reese inbounds the ball to Patterson, crossed half court, goes right side to Chapman, back to Patterson, swings around the left side to Reese. Louisiana outside the arc right now as the clock continues to go down, flashing into the paint occasionally as Stewart. Now driving in, putting up the shot, which was no good, was Patterson getting the rebound and putting up with Stewart. And it went out of bounds, looks like. Slavinsky kind of carried it out with her. She was trying to save it. So last touch by the Lady Tigers, Louisiana inbounding. Chapman gets it up top to Patterson. Goes left side to Campbell, back to Patterson. To Reese, now swinging around to the hands of Campbell who puts up the three-point shot off the rim. It's no good. Rebound, Lady Tigers. Slavinsky, cross half court, left side, out on the wing. Now gets it up top to Janelle Bachelman, back to Slavinsky. See, cutting Natalie Bachman in the paint. Now we skip past cross court to Guzzi, back up top to Bachman. Slavinsky, left wing, off the rim, no good. Rebound collected that time by Pedersen. She gets it quickly up to Reese. Reese is going to drive, put up the shot. Blocked that time by Natalie Bockelman. As time expires, Louisiana is going to go to the half with an 11-6 lead. You're listening to Bulldogs basketball action on Eagle 102. The Eagle 102 halftime report is coming up. Brought to you by Cellular and Satellite Center in Bowling Green. Cellular and Satellite Center is the only stop you need to make when it comes to satellite providers, offering direct TV and dish network along with antenna installs. Now a special message from Matthew Niemeyer himself. If you call an 800 number and they say we will be the local installer, they are wrong. Contact Matthew at Sailor and Satellite Center in Bowling Green, your local authorized dealer. Community State Bank of Missouri in Bowling Green and Troy, where the number one priority is the customer and adding new services to help simplify your life and building a strong, high-performance financial services organization. Community State Bank in Bowling Green and Troy, your community bank since 1887, member FDIC. As many as 50% of people don't take their medication as prescribed. Missing or not taking medication can be deadly. For questions about medication, visit your local Health Mart pharmacy, Bowling Green Pharmacy, located right on the square at 8 North Court in Bowling Green. Hear all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth, sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. It's now time for the Eagle 102 halftime report on KJF FM, sponsored by Cellular and Satellite Center in Bowling Green. Gordon Sanders, Marianne Everhart at the half at Louisiana High School. The Louisiana Lady Bulldogs with an 11-6 lead over the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers after a first half of play that saw both teams trying to settle in from an offensive standpoint. Yeah, the first at the end of the first quarter, Louisiana had the lead 4-3. Uh, to three. The only time that uh, Wellsville has really led this game was when they scored the first free throw right off the bat. And uh, since then, Louisiana has kind of come in and taken – taking control they um, tied it up a couple times but Louisiana is able to pull through and of course here in the uh, second quarter Ty Campbell's three kind of helped stretch things out for the Lady Bulldogs that give them this uh, five point lead going into the half. Both teams have seen a few looks from the perimeter and have taken a few three point shots each team has a three pointer under their belt yep. as you mentioned um, but really struggling to find any real rhythm offensively Louisiana's done the most damage with their defense and in transition. Well, I'll tell you what, we talked about uh, taking care of the basketball, excuse me, in the pregame show, and both teams will need to be uh, maybe talk to a little bit about that uh, here in the locker room. But really, Louisiana is the team that's been able to capitalize on those turnovers a little bit more where uh, Wellsville's gotten the uh, maybe advantage, as we talked about before during during the rebound sessions, we talked about their height a little bit. They seem to be doing a little bit better job blocking out. Wellsville does, but they're not 
they're getting the second chance opportunities, but they're not making them. So uh, I'm sure that's something Coach Kripe will be talking to him about as well. When you're when you're young, when you're building experience, being scrappy yeah. can can very often really really work in your favor, and that's kind of what Louisiana benefited from. Absolutely. If if you were awarding scrappy points. Louisiana would get those in the first oh, half of play. They would, and I tell you what, they've really done such a great job all season long with being scrappy. It's kind of one of the, the reasons they're so much fun to watch, and you're anxious to see where they go over the next couple of years. But, yeah, you know, they've really caused a lot of turnovers. they forced those turnovers. They've taken advantage of turnovers. And, really, we talked about it uh, just a little while ago. They're really seeing the offense of uh, Wellsville Middletown pretty well, the defense for the Lady Dogs are, and, and – and they're paying attention, they're soaking that in, and, and they're forcing those turnovers, which um, hopefully in the second half will maybe lead to a few more points for the Lady Dogs. And they were able to take advantage of a number of them in transition, too, made layups yes. that weren't necessarily easy layups. And I really enjoyed watching them break the press. Um, Wellsville Middletown came out, put a full court press on the Lady Dogs, and, and they didn't seem to have any trouble breaking it. The, the very first time it was out there, they got down the court and made two points uh, right off the bat and haven't really seemed to be – be halted by that full court defense from the Tigers yeah we were talking about size a little bit in the the pregame yep. Louisiana's probably going to struggle continue to struggle when they're looking to to post up inside yeah Wellsville Middletown's done a great job of getting in position underneath the basket and you know we talked about it as you mentioned in the pregame that they've got that advantage a little bit and, and really it's more about getting in there and blocking out but the, the height advantage has come into play for them where they've They've gotten a few rebounds a little easier, but like I said before, the key is, is unfortunately, Wellsville's not converting those uh, rebounds into points. At the half, the Louisiana Lady Bulldogs leading the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers by a score of 11-6. to You're listening to Area High School Basketball Action on Eagle 102. One Multi-Sports Complex in Bowling Green is your year-round indoor facility to get your softball and baseball work in. Call Courtney at 573-324-2193 or Matthew at 573-324-8282 to schedule an appointment and to inquire about memberships. One Multi-Sports Complex just off VFW Road in Bowling Green. This is Tracy Brookshire with Pike County Health Department Home Health and Hospice. Did you know our agency currently offers over 30 programs and services to our communities? The Women, Infant, and Children's Program, Infant Through Adult Immunizations, Car Seat Safety Courses, Diabetes Counseling, and of course our amazing Home Health and Hospice programs, just to name a few. Learn more by visiting our website at pikecountyhealth.org and see what services you and your family could benefit from. From the classic cheesesteak and rich crab cakes to the Philadelphia and favorite water ice. A taste of Philly in Bowling Green is a fan favorite. A meal ready for you before or after the game. And game day jerseys are welcome. Open seven days a week. A taste of Philly. Business Highway 54 West in Bowling Green. Your car, your stuff, your savings. Combine your auto and renter's insurance with a call to State Farm Insurance agent Cindy Blaylock in Louisiana. And let Cindy show you how to put life back in your life insurance. Auto, home, and life. Make your wallet happy. Here to help life go right, State Farm Insurance agent Cindy Blaylock in Louisiana. The best coverage of high school sports on KJFM brought to you by Community State Bank of Missouri, County Market in Louisiana, and Bowling Green Pharmacy. Hall of Fame night coverage from Louisiana High School on Eagle 102. If you missed it earlier, we made mention of the fact that the Louisiana High School Hall of Fame class of 2021 is being inducted this evening. Mm -hmm. um, one that you made mention of during the course of the week uh, on Eagle 102 Sports when, when the high school let us know, basically sure. due to weather conditions and stuff like that. Absolutely. Uh, we already have one for next year as uh, Jim Scott uh, will be inducted next year. Um, his family really wanted to be here uh, to see his induction ceremony. The weather has unfortunately kept them away as they're down in Texas. So the uh, the induction committee made the decision to go ahead and, and move his induction ceremony till next year. So he'll be inducted next year. Jim Scott is a 1986 graduate of Louisiana High School, uh, two-sport athlete, three-year letterman for the football team, two-time all-conference and all-district football player, um, also uh, participated in track as well. and so when, Did you say he was on the football team? It, he was. So he's actually getting inducted twice? Well, yeah. he, he was not on the... I thought you said 86. Oh, it well, okay, so he, he was an 86 six, graduate. Right. Okay, so the fall of 86 is when they went. Yeah, uh, so, see, so I was trying for the him. last football team would have been the 1985. Yeah, I was trying for him. Football team, but uh, participated in 
track as well. Went on to, to coach, had a career that included a number of different stops in Missouri and Texas, I believe was in Texas, then returned to Texas, uh, ended up going on to get his master's degree in kinesiology from the University of Houston. Um, in 2015, Jim Scott was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Uh, passed away in 2017, um, January 5th of 17, from that battle. And so his family really, really wanting to be here for the ceremony. So Louisiana High School, you know, restructuring stuff to do everything so that that would be possible. Well, that's pretty neat. For them as well. Um, also being inducted, Curtis Davis, uh, a graduate of the 1974 class. Jason Calvin uh, was a 1991 graduate. Nakia Shepard graduated in 2012. Um, Finally, an athlete that I, I got to actually cover. Well, because you're so young. Yeah, that's what it yeah. is. Um, Roger Walker, 1987. I mean, we don't want to talk about Roger's age by any means. Um, I, I consider Roger still to be a young man. I'm sure you do. I do. Um, uh -huh. And Roger was part of a, a very, very big part of that 1986 See, football team. I, I was willing to give Jim the credit. And I, I can't do that to Roger. It just would go against our, our, our philosophy of things here. Roger is the second, I believe, this is going a little bit on recall, but okay. the second member of that 1986 football team going into the oh, Hall really? of Fame. Um, Brad Walgren. Uh, the quarterback, the All-State quarterback from that football team, Roger Walker, um, All-State, actually on both sides of the ball, if memory serves correctly. Well, what little people, what some people may not know is Roger has just continued to be an All-Star since, since his high school days. Maybe on the softball field, someone was playing slow pitch softball against him. He's never stopped being an all-star. He, he he always gave Marianne great pointers. Whenever we're <laughs> yeah. out on the field, always gave her that little I, bit extra bit of information. Yeah, I think it was like run. Yeah. <laughs> um, or, or, or swing. <laughs> the 1986 Louisiana High School football team also be inducted into the Hall of Fame. And that's a ceremony that's taking place between games this evening. Right now, varsity girls action. We're getting ready to roll into the second half of play. Louisiana's leading 11-6 right now. You're listening to Area High School Basketball on Eagle 102. Cellular Satellite Center is the only stop you need to make when it comes to satellite providers, offering direct TV and dish network along with antenna installs. Now, special message from Matthew Niemeyer himself. If you call an 800 number and they say we will be the local installer, they are wrong. Contact Matthew at Sailor and Satellite Center in Bowling Green, your local authorized dealer. Bowling Green Tractor wants to change the way you think about yard work with their Ego 56-volt arc lithium battery-powered lawnmowers, weed eaters, blowers, trimmers, and chainsaws. At Bowling Green Tractor, you can walk in and see for yourself just how easy these products are to handle. Bowling Green Tractor, your home for Ego. Power beyond belief. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102, brought to you by People's Bank and Trucks, State Farm Insurance, Cindy Waylock, Agent, and Perkins Electrical Services. Second half underway, quickly a shot put up by Slavinsky, no good. Ball kept alive by the Lady Tigers. Louisiana came away with it, though, got the ball across half court, and while they were fighting to keep the ball in play, turnover. That's right. Uh, Pedersen tried to keep the ball in play and unfortunately picked up a dribble and put it back down again. It caused a turnover for the Lady Dogs. Lady Tigers working around. Slavinsky at the top of the key. On her right side is 20, Janelle Bockelman, who's going to put up the shot, the three-pointer. No good. Loose ball. Campbell coming away with it. She's going to get it to Pedersen. Pedersen cross half court, left side to Camel, down to Powell. Powell, three-point shot from the left wing. No good. Rebound, hauled in that time by Bockelman. Will she get called for? She does, she the travel. She picked up her dribble. Might have been helped to the floor just a little bit. It was just a friendly uh, pat on the back. How about we'll go that? The, the traffic helped her momentum, and it was a travel ball goes back to the Louisiana Lady Bulldogs. Emily Powell with it to Pedersen, left side to Campbell. Powell, Powell and Patterson at the top of the key for the Louisiana Lady Bulldogs. Powell now going to Bowser, tries to get it to a cutting. Chapman getting a hand on the ball that time was Natalie Bockelman. Comes away with the steal. Bowser came away with a hand to the face, but seems to be fine shaking it off. Well, she also got called on her second foul. But she kind of took the worst of that she one. She did. Lady Tigers now get a shot off from the left elbow. Also get the rebound, put it up and in off the glass. 
the points that time going to Natalie Bachelman. Those will be her first points of the ball game. Another turnover for but, the Lady Dogs. At which point Wellsville Middletown is now going to inbound the ball. Slavinsky goes right side to Bachelman, back up top to Slavinsky, left side to Guzzi, to Slavinsky, to Bachelman. Slavinsky, top of the key, off the rim, no good. Emily Powell tracks down the rebound. She's immediately double teamed. Lots of pressure from the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers. We got timeout. Coach Brandstetter wants to take a timeout. We'll take one as well. With 6-12 to go here in the third, Louisiana leads Wellsville 11-8. You're listening to High School Basketball on Eagle 102. Hey, this is Ryan with Mid-America Auto and Towing in Bowling Green, and we've got the lot looking good and ready to go. We've got something for everybody's budget. We have a constant rotation of new inventory, including cars, trucks, and SUVs. So if you're out and you're looking for a new car, come by and see me. The Mid-America Auto and Towing, just off Highway 54 in Bowling Green, is a one-stop shop. Like us on Facebook or check out our website, midamericaautoandtowing.com. Follow area high school sports throughout the season on Eagle 102, brought to you by Mike's Tire and Service Center, Yolia Landscape Supply, and A Taste of Philly. 11-8 the score, the Louisiana Lady Bulldogs leading the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers came out with a lot of extra pressure they in did. the second half. They did, and the turnovers uh, have really played a heck against the Louisiana Lady Bulldogs. They're going to fin- figure out how to break that. Quickly breaking push. that pressure, getting it across half court. Louisiana, a couple passes, then has it stripped away. It was that time Janelle Bachelman getting a hand in there on Chapman. Loose ball. I feel like Wellsville's come out a little more scrappy here in the second half. They seem to really be going for the basketball a lot more here, especially the loose ball. Down by three, Bowser inbounding the ball, quick bounce pass into Powell. Powell takes an arm to the head, shot's no good. Rebound, put back up and in by Campbell. Give Campbell five here in the basketball game. Leading 13 to eight, Slavinsky at the top of the key for the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers. They work the ball, right wing, left wing, back top of the key. Pass that time, blocked away, knocked away by Bowser. And Louisiana's going to be called for a turnover. Um, Campbell ended up after Bowser got a hand on it. Campbell got the ball. She got it to Patterson. Patterson got called for the travel, and the ball goes back to the Lady Tigers. Looks like Wellsville made some adjustments in the locker room, and they get that quick two points there on that nice offensive set. Nice pass down low to Henderson. Henderson just puts it up and in off the glass. They executed quickly that time. Haven't been working the ball down low all that much, but it paid off that time. Louisiana breaks the press. Cross half court. Emily Powell passes up the open three, gets it to Campbell, works it now to Pedersen, to Chapman, to Pedersen, back to Campbell, who's up at the top of the key right wing at Pedersen. Far right wing would be Chapman. Bounce pass inside to Bowser. Nothing there. She kicks it back out. Swing it around to Powell, fakes the three-pointer and drives, and she's fouled. And it looks like Henderson's going to pick up the foul. First team foul, first foul for Henderson. Checking into the ball game is Keegan Hall. Hall is in, Henderson is out. Louisiana, Reagan Bowser inbounds to Powell. Powell drives free throw line, then goes right side to Chapman, just inside the arc, puts up an air ball, fighting to keep it alive that time is Campbell. Actually, a ball that would have gone back to Louisiana as it was touched by Lady Tiger, but Campbell wasn't able to realize that quick enough. Went out of bounds, last touch by Louisiana. So Slavinsky brings it across half court, then goes right side to Guzzi. Guzzi sees a little space, drives, puts up a shot that's no good, out of bounds, last touch by Louisiana. If she had just uh, kept the ball for another dribble or two, she probably would have had that layup, but she picked it up thinking she was a little closer than she was. Stewart and Reese into the ball game. Pedersen and Chapman out of the game for Louisiana. Kripe back in the ball game for the Lady Tigers. Three-point shot right wing off the inbounds pass, put up its air ball by Slavinsky. Coming away with it, pushing up court is Bowser. Bowser drives off the glass, it's no good. Stewart gets a hand on it. Loose ball on the floor. Got Bowser and Hall. Reese got in there, and I thought Coach Kripe was trying to get a timeout called instead. They were awarded the basketball on the jump ball call. 
And it's going to be Wellsville Middletown bringing it across half court. Quickly setting up offense. Stolen away by Campbell. Campbell, a one-on-two break. Ball goes out of bounds. They're saying last touch by Campbell. I'm not 100% sure Coach Brandstetter agrees. Well, and uh, the officials are going to discuss it, and they're going to say, yep, it did go. Okay, saying last touch by Campbell as she was driving through to Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers. Yeah, they thought Wellsville had swatted the basketball from behind to knock it out of bounds. Slavinsky, right side, goes up top to Guzzi, back to Slavinsky. They're working it back and forth. Campbell gets a hand on it, collected from the backcourt. That time is Slavinsky. Now going inside to Hall. Hall's going to spin, try to put up the shot on Stewart. Stewart stops her from making the shot, but does collect the foul. And it's going to send him to the free throw line for two. Hall was back at the free throw line back in the first quarter, and I think that was courtesy of Stewart that time well as well. She made both of them that time. Just missed the first. She'll get one more. Still a three-point lead for the Louisiana Lady Bulldogs. They're up 13-10, 3.52 to go in the third quarter of play. Crest. Chapman and Pedersen back into the ball game. Powell and Bowser out for Louisiana. Crowd starting to really come in for the uh, induction ceremonies coming up here between basketball games. Next shot's put up. It's good by Hall, which makes it a two-point game. Still full court pressure by Wellsville Middletown. Louisiana gets it in. Reese into Pedersen. Skip pass cross court now. Back to Pedersen, who then tries to get the ball to Reese. As Reese is trying to get rid of it, she's called for a travel. Coach Brancer is kind of curious on the call. So it's going to be the Lady Tigers now inbounding the ball. Bringing it across half court is Slavinsky. Putting a little bit of pressure on her as the Tigers continue to work it around. Three-point shot put up by Guzzi. It's off the front of the rim. No good. Chapman comes away with the rebound. And then it's going to be called a jump ball, as I said, Hall wrapped her up. Well, that 86 team is really rolling in now. Louisiana inbounds the ball. Chapman with it right now. Hasn't put the ball on the floor yet. Pedersen, skip pass up to Campbell, who gets it across half court just in time. Now she's going to back things out a little bit for Louisiana. Gets it to Chapman. Back to Pedersen, three-point shots put up by Reese off the back of the rim, no good. Rebound Pedersen in the paint, tries to put the shot up, and she's fouled. So Louisiana will have their first trip to the charity stripe this evening. Janelle Buckelman, Buckelman with the foul that time. Pedersen going to the free throw line. Um, as you mentioned, the first trip to the line for the Lady Bulldogs this evening. They have a two-point lead, looking to stretch that the easy way. The first one is up and in. The end. It's now 14-11, Louisiana on top of Wellsville Middletown. The next is up and in as well. Six points in the game for Jordan Pedersen. Cross half court, setting up the offense. Right wing, Slavinsky. She looks to go to Hall, skips the ball out. Back up to the top to Guzzi, back into Hall. Right wing to Slavinsky, who's going to drive and put up the shot over the much taller Stewart. Rebound collected by Chapman. Chapman's trying to get it to Reese. Stolen by Slavinsky, who puts it up. It's no good. Ball on the floor again. And I know this is going to shock everybody, but we have a jump ball. Possibly not our first of the ball game. <laughs> Probably not our last either. 15-11, 241 on the clock. I feel almost like this is high school graduation all over again. Oh, with everybody rolling in here that you uh, went to school with? Quite possibly. Shot put up just past the free throw line by Kripe off the back of the rim. It's no good. Rebound collected by the Indians, by the Lady Tigers, who are continuing to work the ball around off the rim. No good. Missed shot from Slavinsky. Reese comes away with it. She's looking to drive, and she's fouled. He's driving to the basket that time was Reese. Reese has a lot of nice speed for her. She really adds some depth uh, for the Lady Dogs off the bench. That's three fouls now on Slavinsky. And I feel like she's going to have a seat. She is as Hager comes back in the basketball game. Again, 15-11 the score, 2-23. Reagan Bowser inbounds the ball to Powell, to Patterson, to Chapman. 
Chapman, above her head, nobody wasting a dribble. Patterson back to Powell in the paint to Bowser. Bowser to Reese, to Powell. Powell's going to drive, looks for the bounce pass wow. to Bowser. Not collected that time by Reagan. Instead, coming away with it is Hall of the Lady Tigers. And quickly up court would be Wellsville Middletown. Hall's now going to look to drive baseline, and it's Bowser with the block and the foul. Uh, Hall's been spending some time with the charity strike for the Lady Tigers. Here this evening, she's three for four. We'll see if she can improve on that with a minute 57 to go here in the third. She's going to have a pair and a chance to cut the lead in half. The first one's up. It's good. 15-12 is the score with 157 on the clock. The next from Hall, rolls around, does not go down. Rebound collected by Powell. Powell tries to get out of the paint, stripped away by Wellsman Muddletown. Loose ball collected that time by Campbell. And Campbell, not foul, jump ball, right? Well, She's wrapped up. Yeah. I didn't see a foul called. They did not call a foul. And Coach Brinstetter was a little concerned because she was on the court, and Wellsville actually kind of had to lay across her to get that jump ball call. So. So now Louisiana crossed half court. Powell with it. She goes up top to Pedersen, the left wing. Skip pass cross court now to Chapman. Foot on the line, shot up, no good. Rebound, Hall comes away with it, and they're saying Hall was fouled. And that's going to be Reagan Bowser's third team's fourth. No, excuse me. That's going to be. Going on Bowser or going on Campbell? Yeah, they're going on Campbell. That hers was up a while ago. Sorry, that was Campbell's okay. third or second. Okay, so the Tigers now on offense. Top of the key, Guzzi was going to look at the three-point shot. Quickly there was Campbell. Goes right side to Bockelman. Back to Guzzi up near the top of the key. Swing it around, go into the paint, and then kicking it right back out is Hall. Uh, Slow-moving offense. Now Hall's going to drive into the paint, put up the shot, and she's fouled. And I believe that's going to be tagged on Reese. believe so and if if so no, it looks like they're going to call it on Powell that's her second okay so Hall's going to put up another free throw this one's good Jim's getting a little crowded down here the next free throw is good as well it's a one point game 15 to 14 105 to go here in the third a little more pressure still by Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers. Campbell gets it to Pedersen. Pedersen crossed half court. Three on two break. Reese with the ball. She sees a little space in the paint. She drives, puts up the shot, and she's fouled. So Reese will head to the free throw line for the first time this evening with under a minute to go in the third. Dogs up by one. Looked like that foul was going to go on Henderson. Instead, I think Keegan Hall is getting the foul. Reese's free throw is up off the back of the rim. No good. She'll get a second. Next shot up by Reese off the side of the rim. No good. Hall with the rebound that time. Hall gets the ball to Bockelman. Bockelman crossed half court. Goes right side to Guzzi. Guzzi tries to feed inside to Hall off her fingertips, but she regains control of it, goes to put up a shot, and she's wrapped up. With another jump ball. Chapman was getting a hand on it that time. That pass led her maybe just a little bit more than she could control and still get the shot off, but the Lady Tigers still have the ball. Inbounds pass, Bockelman left wing. Three-pointer is good. So the first time since the opening points of the game, that the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers have had a lead. Stolen away now by the Lady Tigers as Louisiana is trying to break the press. Hall with the ball to Bockelman. Left side now, she feeds it down low. Henderson turns, puts up the shot, no good. Reese with the rebound, and she's fouled. That foul is going to go against Hall, which will be her second. So Louisiana down by two after leading for the majority of the first three quarters. 18.5 18.5 seconds on the clock. Coach Kripe pulling back that full court pressure. Picking him up at half court. Pedersen gets the ball to Campbell. 
Pass back to Patterson. Patterson's going to drive, sees a little space in the paint. She has the ball blocked as she's trying to drive by that time Bockelman. Bockelman now brings it across half court. Two seconds left. Shots put up, blocked by Campbell. No foul. And the third quarter of play ends with the Louisiana Lady Bulldogs trailing the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers 17-15 as we head to the fourth quarter. You're listening to Area High School Basketball on KJFM Radio. Ingram Plumbing has always been known for its outstanding plumbing service, but did you know that Ingram's is also the largest retail plumbing supply store in the area? We carry Delta faucets, a complete line of Whirlpool tubs and showers, jacuzzi pumps, and many other specialty items. Stop by Ingram Plumbing today, Highway 61 Bowling Green. Bundle at Pike County Mutual Insurance and save. Ask about the great rates on your personal vehicle, farm trucks, big or small, or even your motorcycle and side-by-sides. Stop by and see myself, Corey Buchanan, or Kathy Gam at your hometown insurance company since 1895. Pike County Mutual Insurance on the square in Bowling Green. Bringing you all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth. Sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. Gordon, Gordon Sanders, Marianne Everhart from Louisiana High School as Natalie Bockelman basically brought yes. them back into it from an offensive standpoint with five points there yeah. in the third quarter well, and then some good free throw shooting from Hall. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. And then Keegan Hall going um, four for six from the charity stripe. Just in the third quarter. Yeah. So Louisiana has the ball to start the final quarter of action. Patterson goes left side to Powell. Powell's going to look to drive, then kick it back out to Patterson. Patterson's now going to drive into the paint. She's going to put up the shot. Doesn't go. Rebound collected by Hall. Maybe he was hoping for a foul there. Slavinsky, quick pass in, now gets the ball right back and puts it off the glass. That's the largest lead of the night, for sure, for Tigers at four. Four Four-point lead. Louisiana gets it across half court with some pressure. Emily Powell with it. Now to Campbell. Campbell off the glass, and that's good. Ty Campbell with the bucket to make it only a two-point deficit for the Louisiana Lady Bulldogs. Lady Tigers bring it across half court. Guzzi goes right side to Slavinsky. Bounce pass low to Henderson. Now back up top to Guzzi, who tries an ill-advised touch pass. Louisiana comes away with it. Campbell now with the ball. Has it stolen away by Slavinsky. And Slavinsky is going to be fouled by Patterson when she's trying to get it across half court. Slavinsky struggled at times this evening, but has also looked very, very solid at times as well. Jordan Patterson picking up her first foul of the night. Got a shoe tie timeout going on as well. All right. 19-17 the score, Wellsville Middletown leading Louisiana in the fourth quarter, 6.56 on the clock right now. Up top is now to Hall, tries to skip it back up top to Slavinsky, who briefly loses possession of the ball. Gets it back, now pass intended for Slavinsky. She lost it again, went across half court, Good over and back. Ball goes back to the Louisiana Lady Bulldogs. Backcourt violations get you sometimes. Patterson gets the ball to Powell. Powell goes to Bowser. Bowser guarded by Kripe. Goes by her. Puts the shot up high off the glass. It's good for two by Reagan Bowser. And the game's tied up at 19. Lady Bulldogs trying to pick off and get their sixth win of the season and a conference win this evening. Lady Tigers tried to go down low, get it into the hands of Guzzi, and as she puts up the shot, she's fouled. They're saying this is the third foul on Emily Powell as Guzzi finds herself at the free throw line. First one's up and good. Powell made sure she didn't get the easy bucket. Now the Lady Tigers have a one-point lead. Second shot is put up. It's no good. So that foul by Powell took a point off the board. Trying to get the ball across half half court. Keeping it alive is Coleman. And we're going to have a jump ball as there was a Tiger who pounced on the ball. The um, 
the errant pass. Coleman kept it in play. A Tiger got a hold of it, and then Bowser wrapped her up. Now the possession arrow in favor of Wellsville Middletown will move back towards Louisiana's favor as Wellsville Middletown sets things up on offense. Stolen away by Pedersen, and then reaching in, getting a hand on it is Slavinsky. Not calling a foul, just saying that she knocked the ball away. Powell inbounds it to Patterson. Back to Powell. Sees a little space in the paint. She looks to drive, and she's fouled. They're going to call that on Bockelman Janelle. 20 to 19 is the score. Wellsville Middletown up by one. Quick inbounds to Powell. Puts up the three-point shot off the back of the rim. No good. Slavinsky gets the rebound. She's going to push the ball. Looks to drive. Defended by Powell. No good. Rebound collected that time by Wellsville Middletown. Shot no good. Again rebounded by, by Wellsville Middletown. Slavinsky feeds it inside to Hall. Hall puts it high off the glass. It rolls in. Two points for Hall and the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers. They now have a three-point lead. Full court pressure. Powell dribbles it across half court. She's going to drive, put up the shot. It's no good. Foul's going to be called against Wellsville Middletown. No. Yes. Yeah, but It's going to go against Hall. Powell's going to go the free throw line. And that's, I believe, the third foul against Hall. Emily Powell's first free throw is up. It's off the back of the rim. No good. 5.18 to go here in the ball game. She's going to have one more free throw to try to bite into this three-point lead, and she does. She makes the second one, and it's now just a two-point lead for the Lady Tigers. Chapman's going to take a seat on the bench. Reese back into the ball game for Louisiana. Reese on the floor along with Powell. Powell, Coleman, Pedersen, and Bowser. Quickly pushing the ball up the court. Shot high off the glass by the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers. Goes in, and it's now a four-point lead, which is their biggest of the ball game. Tied for their biggest of the ball game. Reese with the ball on the left ring. Skip, skip pass to Chapman to uh, skip pass that time across court to Campbell who put up the shot. It was no good. Rebound collected by Wellsville Middletown. Fought for now. Getting the ball quickly up court wow. is Slavinsky. She's going to drive to the hole and have the ball swatted out of bounds by Reese. Yeah, Reese went high. Got that denial. Wellsville Middletown inbounding. Trying to get into Hall. She gets it in the paint and she's fouled. I believe they're gonna tag Bowser with that. And that should be her fourth. As Hall heads back to the charity stripe, she's been there numerous times tonight already. Bowser gives up a fair amount size-wise, but has made her presence felt in the paint. Wellsville now at their largest lead of the night at five after that first made bucket. One more free throw for Hall. 25-20 our score. Wellsville Middletown on top with 4.45 to go. Missed free throw collected by Reese. Quickly across half court this time. Bounce pass from Reese to Patterson. Back to Campbell. Campbell to Patterson. Cross to Powell. Powell on the right wing looking inside for Bowser. Powell's going to drive. Loses the handle on the ball. Loose ball collected again by Powell. Quick dribble. Then out to Campbell. Campbell loses it, has it stolen away at time. Loose ball on the floor now as they're fighting for it. Going to be called a jump ball. Possession arrow stays with Louisiana. Bowser is going to inbound. Gets it into Patterson, right side. Now fed inside to Bowser. Back out, Reese with the three-pointer. It's up, no good. Campbell trying to collect at that time, and she's going to go out of bounds. And the ball is going to go back to the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers. Bowsville, Bowser quick, back quickly on defense that time as Wellsville's trying to get it across half court. Bowser's out of fouls to give. Wellsville Middletown working around until they find something they like. That something would be Hall. Hall puts up. The shot as she's cutting into the paint. It goes in, and it's now a seven-point lead for Wellsville Middletown. 
Lady Bulldogs need to stop and some points. Driving, putting up the shot is Pedersen. She has the shot blocked that time by Beckelman. Driving is Slavinsky. She puts the shot up and in off the glass. Not sure what Coach Kripe said at half, but uh, definitely been a difference in the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers. We got a timeout on the court. We'll take one as well. 3.30 to go here in the ball game. Wellsville leads Louisiana 29-20. You're listening to High School Basketball on Eagle 102. The Mercantile Bank of Louisiana is introducing Merc BK Mobile with the ability to take a picture of your check and deposit it into your Mercantile Bank account. You'll never have to worry about getting to the bank. Find more information by visiting MercBK.com. The Mercantile Bank, located on the corner of 3rd and Georgia Streets in downtown Louisiana. Member FDIC. The area's best coverage of high school sports is on Eagle 102. Brought to you by Pike County Health Department, Home Health and Hospice and All Parts. Gordon Sanders, Marion Everhart from Louisiana High School, a game that Louisiana led for Basically the better part of three quarters. Yeah, really, and I, you know, uh, really here in the fourth, Wellsville's really turned it on and, and really made buckets they should be making. Um, and a lot of those are off of turnovers. Louisiana seen the game get away from them in the fourth quarter, have shown that they've had the ability to score in transition, but they're going to need a few more of those stops defensively. Well, and really they've got to stop fouling. Um, you know, Keegan Hall at the free throw line has been has been pretty solid here in the second half. She's she spent a good chunk of time at the free throw line in this ball game, and Bowser's playing still in the ball game with four fouls under three and a half minutes to go. Louisiana trying to get the ball down low to Reese. Ball goes out of bounds. Errant pass from Campbell that time. And it's going to be the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers inbounding the ball. Slavinsky knocked away that time by Chapman. Loose ball on the floor fighting for it. Finally, they get the ball into the hands of Bowser, who's going to drive. Put up the shot. The layup up and in off the glass. It's good. Now the steal by Powell on the inbound. She gets it to Bowser. Bowser puts up the shot again. It's no good. Loose ball on the floor being fought for, going out of bounds, saying last touch by Wellsville Middletown. It's going to stay with Louisiana in their half the court. Pedersen's coming in. Not sure who she's, oh, she's coming in for Chapman. Reese still in the ball game, along with Bowser. Also Campbell, Power, Powell, and Pedersen. Reese is inbound up top. To Powell. Powell's going to drive into the paint. Nothing there. Picks up her dribble to Patterson. Left side to Campbell. Skip pass to Powell. Powell again driving right side looking for someone cutting. There's Bowser. Bowser sees the seam. Looks to drive to the hole and she's fouled. Reagan Bowser will be going back to the free throw line. 29-22 is our score. This probably the best place for Louisiana to collect some points. Right now it absolutely is. A, see if they can get some points on the board while the clock is stopped. First one up and good for Bowser. She'll get a second. 29-23, 2.51 to go here in the ball game. Takes a couple dribbles, eyes the basket, the shot's up. It rolls around, no good. Rebound, Natalie Bockelman. She gets it to Guzzi, to Hall, back to Guzzi. A little bit of pressure, making it harder for her to get across half court. They do, though, into the hands of Slavinsky, who is fouled. And looks like Bowser feels it is going on her. We'll have to wait and see if that's who they're calling on or not. And they do. Reagan Bowser has a seat with five fouls. Reagan Bowser exits the ball game. Chapman into the ball game. 29-23 is our score right now. Louisiana trailing by six with two minutes and 40 seconds to go in the ball game. The free throws up. It's no good, but Hall gets the rebound, and Hall puts that right back up and in for the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers. Timeout, Wellsville Middletown leading Louisiana 31-23. You're listening to Area High School basketball action on Eagle 102 Sports. I'm Tylee Mills, the CEO of Pike County Memorial Hospital. You've heard it from your friends, family, and even neighbors. They choose Pike County Memorial Hospital. Quality care from quality people. Pike County Memorial Hospital. Area High School Sports is on Eagle 102. Brought to you by Pike County Memorial Hospital and Cellular and Satellite Center. 
31-23, our score, Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers leading the Louisiana Bulldogs with 2.37 to go in this ball game. And Marianne, we had touched on it. Louisiana had control of the game for most of the game. Uh, but you did see something that changed from a defensive intensity standpoint with Wellsville Middletown. They did, and, and you started to see little bits of it as they came out of the locker room at the half. And then really in the fourth quarter, it seems like they stepped up and that uh, decided to bring a little bit more of an uh, aggressive game with them. Um, here in the fourth quarter trying to round things up. So I don't know if that's part of their strategy. Let's just, you know, play timid until the final quarter and then we'll just turn on all aggression or what. And Reagan Bowser kind of a, a spark plug, if you will, for the Lady Bulldogs. She's now on the bench with five fouls, so they won't have her down the stretch. No more pressure from Wellsville Middletown. They backed off. Patterson gets it across half court to Powell, to Chapman. To Powell again, who's going to drive. Louisiana can't wait too long for points to start to come together. Pedersen gets it to Chapman, back to Pedersen, swing it around. I'm sorry, from Campbell to Pedersen, back to Chapman, back to Pedersen, to Campbell. Now Powell with it. She's going to drive into the paint, lay the ball up off the glass, and underhanded a, a scoop layup, if you will, now stolen away by Campbell. Campbell gets it to Chapman. Chapman puts it high off the glass, no good fighting to keep the ball alive. They're saying last touch by Chapman. And really when Powell took it to the hole there just a few minutes ago, I'm not real sure how they didn't get the and one called. Um, as her arm was hit as she went up, but that's why we have the bird's eye view up here. And don't wear stripes. A little bit of pressure from Louisiana trying to prevent Wellsville Milltown from getting across half court. Almost stolen by Campbell. Getting into the hands. Now Slavinsky, Slavinsky at the top of the key. More pressure from Powell this time. And Coach Kripe wants a timeout to talk about it. It's a six-point ball game. Wellsville Middletown leads Louisiana 31-25 with 1.39 to go. You're listening to Area High School Basketball on KJFM Radio. Hello, this is Brittany Hinkey with Community State Bank of Missouri. Now is the perfect time to start saving for retirement. Community State Bank offers competitive rates on traditional and Roth IRAs. Unlike most investments, some contributions may be tax-deductible and will grow either tax-deferred or tax-free. Come in and see one of our IRA representatives in Troy or Bowling Green to maximize your savings opportunities today. Community State Bank of Missouri, your hometown community bank since 1887, member FDIC. Follow area high school sports on KJFM Radio. Brought to you by Young Enterprises, Family Drug, and Brown Smokehouse Meats. Coming out of the timeout, Wellsville has the basketball. Inbounds pass to Hall. Hall puts it off the glass. It's good for two. Lost track of her completely, and it's now an eight-point lead for the Lady Tigers. Under a minute and a half. Pass intended for Campbell. Loses the handle on it. It goes out of bounds. It was deflected by a, a Wellsville Middletown Lady Tiger, and now it is Wellsville Middletown ball. They get the ball in, try to. Slavinsky comes away with it now, and she's going to be called for a travel pass that was intended for Hall. Hall went down, but Slavinsky was able to track it down and then turned it over. Still an eight-point lead for the Lady Tigers with, again, under a minute and a half to play in the ball game. Reagan Bowser is left for Louisiana with five fouls. I got to tell you, Wellsville Milltown has put up more points here in the fourth quarter than they did in the first three quarters combined. Emily Powell drives into the paint. She's fouled. She hits the ground and is going to go to the free throw line more in the fourth quarter than, than the rest of the game. Uh, we ended the third quarter with uh, Wellsville on top of 30, or 17 to 15. So I guess technically they're one point away from tying the most points. Emily Powell's free throw is up. It's good. She gets another one. And again, the best possible place for Louisiana to find points here down the stretch. It's up and in, climbs out of the basket, rebound collected by Henderson of the Lady Tigers. And now Wellsville Middletown brings it across half court. Double team, try to get the ball down low to Henderson. She'll put up the shot off the rim, no good. Reese has it, she gets the ball, tries to get the ball across half court and she's called for the carry. And really the turnovers tonight have to be what's uh, frustrating Coach Brandstetter for the Lady Dogs. Guzzi gets the ball inside to Bockelman. Bockelman's going to be fouled by Patterson. 
Bachman head to the free throw line for one and one. Again, 33-26 is our score. Oh, excuse me, she'll get two. That's put them in the double bonus. First one's up, no good. She'll get a second. Louisiana High School Hall of Fame induction ceremony taking place between games this evening. That free throw up, no good. Chapman with the rebound. Patterson quickly across half court. She's being hounded by Hall. Patterson tries to get the ball that time to Reese. Getting a hand on the ball would be Bockelman. It went out of bounds. Last touch by the Lady Tigers. Now Coach Brandstetter wants a timeout. We'll take one as well. 46 ticks to go in this one. Wellsville leads Louisiana 33-26. to You're listening to High School Basketball on Eagle 102. It's a great time to buy or sell a home. I'm Vicki Cadwalder, and I take pride in offering skills that make the process go smoothly from beginning to end. Even after closing, I enjoy staying in touch and being there to help you if you have any other needs or questions. Call me, and we'll create a personalized plan just for you. Vicki Cadwalder Real Estate, loving our small town life. High School Sports on your area sports leader, Eagle 102. Brought to you by Bowling Green Tractor, Vicki Cadwalder Real Estate, and Ingram Plumbing. 46.6 seconds left in this ball game. Louisiana Lady Bulldogs led for the majority of the first three quarters uh, while you only had the first point of the game put up by the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers. And then they took the lead 17-15 going into the fourth quarter of play and have led ever since, have stretched that lead. And Louisiana's had a tough time clawing their way back into it. They have, and I tell you what, we talked about turnovers. Uh, you know, at this point, I've almost kind of lost track where we're at as far as those go on both ends of the basketball. But we talked about that. We thought we would see a lot of that here in this game with the two young squads. The Louisiana Lady Bulldogs with the ball, but trailing by seven points with 46.6 seconds left. Pedersen gets the ball into Campbell. Up top to Reese, then back to Pedersen. Three-point shot put up by Powell off the back of the glass. No good. Rebound. Reese got it. And she'll head to the charity stripe. She'll get a chance to shoot two with uh, 37 and a half ticks to go here in the ball game. She was fouled as she was looking to put that shot back up. Reese's first free throw rolls in and out. I feel like free throws are something that's going to be practiced Monday if everybody goes back to school. Threw that if out there as a tip of the hat to Mother Nature, not looking to... That's right. Reese's shot off the back of the rim, no good. Trying to push the ball quickly up court to Slavinsky. Instead, Chapman was able to track it down first. She gets it to Patterson, to Campbell. Back to Patterson, to Powell. Powell's going to put up the three-point shot. No good, out of bounds. And it's going to be Wellsville Middletown ball. 22.6 seconds on the clock. It's still a seven-point lead. Even this, all good practice for both squads Absolutely. being that they're young. And Powell's going to get the foul right on the inbounds play. They're going to walk to the other end to give Wellsville the opportunity to shoot two. Going to the free throw line is Guzzi. Looking to put the, put the game away, make it uh, beyond a three-possession game at that point. First free throw is up. It's good. Now they've officially scored as many points in the fourth quarter as they did the first three. 34-26 is the score, an eight-point lead. Wellsville middle down, Middletown with nobody on the blocks. Rebounding now. The shot's put up. It's no good. Lane and violation. I'm pretty sure she got a, a lane violation as she was um, – a little too enthusiastically <laughs> going for the rebound on her own free throw. She was. But, hey, hats off to her. I like to see it. I like to see that chase the fall on your shot. Patterson to Powell to Campbell. Campbell right wing. She's going to drive into the paint. Kicks it out now to Reese. Reese is going to drive into the paint. Puts up the shot. It's good. No foul called. And Louisiana wants a timeout with 8.7 seconds on the clock. You're listening to Area High School Basketball on Eagle 102. 
Farmers, the crew at Mike's Tire and Service Center is here to serve you. They know the hours you put in, which makes it difficult to get that equipment in for service. Therefore, they offer on-the-farm tire repairs. Hi, folks. My name is Cody Kirkendall, Mike's Tire and Service Center, located on Business Highway 61 in Bowling Green. The most complete coverage of high school sports on Eagle 102. Brought to you by Mid-America Auto and Towing, the Mercantile Bank, and Pike County Mutual Insurance. Gordon Sanders, Marion Everhart broadcasting from Louisiana High School. The Louisiana Lady Bulldogs trailing by six with 8.7 seconds on the clock. Both teams have used pressure at times. Yes. Both have benefited from it during the course of the ball game, which, again, you would expect being younger ball clubs. Absolutely. And I tell you what, the hustle of both teams tonight has been tremendous, and it's a hats off to both of them. Again, we can't talk enough about how young both squads are. And, uh, you know, they're going to continue just to improve each and every day. They continue to develop. You know, this could be a very, very interesting matchup. Give us two years and yeah. this, this could be quite the matchup. 34-28 is the score with 8.7 seconds on the clock. Inbounding is Guzzi for the Lady Tigers. Gets it quickly ahead to Slavinsky who collects the ball, tries to put it off the glass, and she does. Good for two for Wellsville Middletown to put the game away. Quickly up court, as the buzzer sounds, the Louisiana Lady Bulldogs fall to the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers, 36 to 28. Post game shows on the way. You're listening to area high school basketball action on Eagle 102. The Eagle 102 post game show is coming up. As many as 50% of people don't take their medication as prescribed. Missing or not taking medication can be deadly. For questions about medication, visit your local HealthMart Pharmacy, Bowling Green Pharmacy, located right on the square at 8 North Court in Bowling Green. From the classic cheesesteak and rich crab cakes to the Philadelphian favorite water ice, a taste of Philly in Bowling Green is a fan favorite. A meal ready for you before or after the game. And game day jerseys are welcome. Open seven days a week. A taste of Philly. Business Highway 54 West in Bowling Green. This is Tracy Brookshire with Pike County Health Department Home Health and Hospice. Did you know our agency currently offers over 30 programs and services to our communities? The Women, Infant, and Children's Program, Infant Through Adult Immunizations, car seat safety courses, diabetes counseling, and of course our amazing home health and hospice programs. Just to feel. Learn more by visiting our website at pikecountyhealth.org and see what services you and your family could benefit from. Hear all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth, sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. Time now for the Eagle 102 post game show on KJFM. Gordon Sanders, Marianne Everhart, after that ball game, which wrapped up again the final score, 36 to 28, the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers lost, uh, defeated the Louisiana Lady Bulldogs in a game that, again, Louisiana led for three quarters of the game, which is a step in a positive direction and for the Lady Bulldogs, but a, a big step for a young Wellsville Middletown club. And we'll too. just let you know the couple of high scores real quick. Ty Campbell, Reagan Bowser each had uh, seven points. Jordan Pedersen with six. Emily Powell, four. And then uh, Depresia Chapman and Jayla Reese each had two. The leading score for Wellsville Middletown, uh, Keegan Hall put up 17 points, 15 of those in the second half. Okay. She was their leading scorer tonight. Well, we knew she had a good evening from the free throw line um, and collected a number of other points along the way as well. So hats off to the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers who picked up the win against the Louisiana Lady Bulldogs this evening. All right, so now we're getting ready for the Hall of Fame game. The Hall of Fame game, the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. You know, I'm just going to throw this out here. Jason Calvin just happens to be a cousin of mine. I know we're all going to find that shock that Marianne's related to somebody. But, uh, you know, a 91 graduate, I'm going to tease him a little bit here and tell him that, you know, maybe he should have brought a hat with him this evening. There's a couple people that may have that problem as well. He's oh. the first one being inducted this evening. Jason Calvin, a 1991 graduate of Louisiana High School, two-sport athlete at Louisiana, participated in football and track. Yeah, we can, I tell you what, what we'll do, we'll, uh, we'll turn one of the mics over and we'll let the announcer uh, handle it, so. Jason's track honors include being a four-time all-conference and all-district 
two-time All-State champion in the shot put, his junior and senior years. As a senior, he broke the state record for the shot put. He still holds the shot put record at Louisiana High School. He was a member of the 19th 
have two sons, James and Justin, a daughter-in-law, Christina, and have two grandchildren, Olivia and Nolan. Roger is employed with the Missouri Department of Transportation as a machine operator and a crew leader. The remainder of the first half only saw a field goal by kicker Chuck Gibbs. 
but also included a gold line stand by the Bulldogs, keeping the Indians out of the end zone from the two-yard line on an interception by John Cox in the end zone. The Bulldogs came out and scored on their first position of the second half and the fourth down pass from Brad Walgren to Russell Reed from 19 yards, giving the Bulldogs a 17-8 lead early in the third. Later in the third, the defense stepped up again. Chuck Gibbs intercepted a pass intended for the running back and returned it 44 yards for a touchdown. The Indians did score with four minutes and 59 seconds left in the fourth quarter to make the final 23 to 14. The 1986 Louisiana Bulldogs were the Missouri 2A state football champions for the first time and the only time in school history. Congratulations again to all of the inductees, the 2021 class of the Louisiana High School Hall of Fame. That's right. Uh, congratulations. Some pretty impressive stories there, some really fun stories, and uh, a chance to, uh, uh, to see some familiar faces. You're listening to area high school basketball coverage on Eagle 102, broadcasting from Louisiana High School. We'll have more coming up as we've got boys varsity action now getting ready to take place. You're listening to Area High School Basketball on Eagle 102. Your car, your stuff, your savings. Combine your auto and renter's insurance with a call to State Farm Insurance agent Cindy Blaylock in Louisiana and let Cindy show you how to put life back in your life insurance. Auto, home, and life. Make your wallet happy. Here to help life go right. State Farm Insurance Agent, Cindy Blaylock in Louisiana. Bowling Green Tractor wants to change the way you think about yard work with their Ego 56-volt arc lithium battery-powered lawnmowers, weed eaters, blowers, trimmers, and chainsaws. At Bowling Green Tractor, you can walk in and see for yourself just how easy these products are to handle. Bowling Green Tractor, your home for Ego. Power beyond belief. When you support a locally owned pharmacy, you're contributing to the growth of the community. The dollars you spend stay right here to support our local community. Healthmart pharmacies are locally owned pharmacies. There's one right here. Healthmart pharmacists have a personal commitment to their communities because just like you, they support their community. Healthmart pharmacies are locally owned and hometown proud. Louisiana is a Healthmart town. Family drug Healthmart pharmacy. The right people, the right price, right downtown. Health Mart, caring for you and about you. As many as 50% of people don't take their medication as prescribed. Some never even fill their prescription, even if they don't feel well. Missing or not taking medication can be deadly. For questions about medication, your local Health Mart pharmacy is here to help. For fast, friendly service and affordable prices every day, visit your local Health Mart pharmacy, Bowling Green Pharmacy, located right on the square at 8 North Court in Bowling Green. Bringing you all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth. Sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. It's time now for the Eagle 102 pregame show. Sponsored by Bowling Green Pharmacy. Gordon Sanders, Marianne Everhart broadcasting from Louisiana High School as we've got more basketball action headed your direction. That um, class, that induction class, you had some basketball players who were on there as well. Not the basketball exploits that were kind of putting a spotlight oh. on people. Oh, wait, you mean Roger Walker wasn't a, a big basketball star too? No, he led it twice in basketball. Brad Walgren was a, was a starter for the basketball team. You had a lot of folks out there who played some basketball action. The, played, played some hoops, did they? Uh, did, uh, but the, um, the accolades that are, are being handed out really are based on, um, as we were talking about it beforehand, football and track. Yeah, I tell you what, and some really impressive things going on and you know you always learn something new um, when you when you go back and do some research you know history history tells you a lot if for those who can remember from back in the day but some of us who don't remember it from back in the day 
until uh, until the basically the induction speech, I had forgotten about the story regarding the, the turf, turf shoes, shoe. which I remember people talking about in high school afterwards. You know that coaches had told them, "Hey, they've already bought their turf shoes. They're positive. They're winning this game. <laughs> They're moving on." Uh, and then found out afterwards that none of that actually happened. You know. Um Probably a lot of the words were used to describe Coach Tony DeSchwinder over the years as a coach, but uh, conniving like that probably wasn't one of them. <laughs> <laughs> the the um, the stories that came from the trips out that direction. Yeah. Um, again, it, it was it, any time a school, and we know over the years, lost track of how many times our area schools have sure. pushed into postseason play and, and been fortunate enough to bring home some state championships in any number of different sports. You know, whether you're covering the games or you're you're cheering on the players individually or collectively as the team, or it, it does have a way of just kind of lifting up the community across it, the board. It sure does, and I tell you what, um, you we were poking a little. Let, let me take that back. I was poking a little fun at, at cousin Jason Calvin and Roger Walker, but I tell you what, that's pretty pretty high honors uh, established, given out to all of them, and I'm glad to see them recognized for all their efforts over the years. Yeah, and, and of course, you always save a little bit of abuse for family and friends. It doesn't matter what their accomplishments yeah, that's are. That's true. That's true. When you come home, you're home. That's right. We wouldn't, uh, really probably wouldn't uh, want it any other way. So, again, hats off to all of those inducted into the Louisiana High School Hall of Fame. If you haven't had a chance to take a peek, the, the pictures, the plaques are up on the wall when coming to a basketball game at Louisiana High School, that's a, another something that you can take in. That's right. Now we've got boys action for you coming your way as the Tigers and the Bulldogs are going to tangle. We're going to tell you all about it and the keys to the game coming up next here on Eagle 102. It's a great time to buy or sell a home. I'm Vicki Cadwalder, and I take pride in offering skills that make the process go smoothly from beginning to end. Even after closing, I enjoy staying in touch and being there to help you if you have any other needs or questions. During the process, I'll work closely with your lender and other professionals to make it as effortless as possible. I'm here with you every step of the way, so when you're ready to buy or sell, call me and we'll create a personalized plan just for you. Vicki Cadwalder Real Estate, loving our small town life. Is it time to renew, redo, or rebuild? I'm Christine Rutherford, and we have loans designed specifically for repairs and renovations, along with home equity lines of credit. People's Bank and Trust, member FDIC, equal housing lender, MLO number 421603, NMLS number 407724. As many as 50% of people don't take their medication as prescribed. Some never even fill their prescription, even if they don't feel well. Missing or not taking medication can be deadly. For questions about medication, your local Health Mart pharmacy is here to help. For fast, friendly service and affordable prices every day, visit your local Health Mart pharmacy, Bowling Green Pharmacy, located right on the square at 8 North Court in Bowling Green. Time now for the Eagle 102 Keys to the Game on KJFM, sponsored by Vicki Cadwallader Real Estate in Louisiana. Keys to the game in this ball game, Louisiana, as we've had a chance to see them, uh, their season unfold as we've rolled along, can do some big stuff offensively. Defensive consistency, that's that's been on that list as far as keys of the game. If they bring that to the table, they've shown that they can play, and I'll say with anybody in the area, the one caveat to that would be a, a Monroe City ball club that's that's just been ridiculous this season. But Louisiana is that that tier right there behind everybody else with Monroe City. Well, I tell you what, I'd probably say that if they could string together their four best quarters, they could play with Monroe City. Um, and we, and maybe one of the few ball clubs in the area that you could say that about. Yeah, and, and they have the talent. They have, they have the, uh, they, well, they have the talent. They have the height. They have the speed. The problem that Louisiana has run into all season long is playing four quarters of basketball. Uh, we've seen them where they've, you know, a lot of times it's usually a quarter each half, uh, and that's just not going to get the job done. We you know, saw it over at Bowling Green where they fell by one to North Callaway in that third-place game. They had tight matchups uh, with Ellsbury throughout the game. They came here, uh, picked up a win over Clopton, um, and hopefully maybe that got them back on the winning track. But Louisiana, their, their number one key for tonight is to play the four full quarters. Now the Louisiana Bulldogs have the ability to score – inside and outside they have the ability to score in transition as well they're not going to be a, a big team compared to some you might run into but 
but with several players who are over six feet in the 6'3 range and or, you know, Ryan Capps isn't one of the tallest, but he definitely lays claim to his space and makes his yep. presence felt on the offensive and defensive glass. Plus, don't give him easy buckets, easy oh, looks yeah. at the basket. He can he can change the flow of a game quickly. And he's going to have um, some dominance over Wellsville. We got to see them play a little bit over at the Montgomery County Tournament. And, you know, we're safe to assume maybe they've improved a little bit over the uh, season. But Wellsville really graduated a good portion of their talent. And so they're kind of in that same rebuilding year, re rebuilding, regrouping, whatever you want to call it. And I think Ryan Capps' size is going to give him um, – a definite advantage underneath tonight. Um, the thing that Louisiana is going to have to watch is the outside shooting of Wellsville Middletown. They're, they're going to want to win that game tonight. They're going to have to drop those threes, but you're going to have to work around the big, you know, wingspan of a Mason Washington. Um, you know, quick feats of of Nathan Perkins and and a few others. I mean, there's so many contributors out on the Louisiana Bulldog team that it's just it's just you know you're you're going to have they're going to have to play smart ball from the outside. They're not going to be able to compete with Louisiana, I don't think, on the inside. If Wellsville Middletown gives Louisiana too many open looks, they'll be in trouble. Those are your keys of the game for this evening. The Louisiana Bulldogs playing host to the Wellsville Middletown Tigers. You're listening to area high school basketball action on KJFM Radio. Hi, this is Amy at Community State Bank of Missouri. Did you know we offer health savings accounts? If you have a high deductible health plan, you may qualify for a health savings account. HSAs are designed to help you save your money to help pay your deductible. Talk to your employer about our health savings account and let them know you want to keep your money right here at home. Community State Bank of Missouri, your hometown community bank since 1887, member FDIC. One multi-sports complex in Bowling Green is your year-round indoor facility to get your softball and baseball work in. Call Courtney at 573-324-2193 or Matthew at 573-324-8282 to schedule an appointment and to inquire about memberships. One multi-sports complex just off VFW Road in Bowling Green. Hey, this is Ryan with Mid-America Auto and Towing in Bowling Green, and we've got the lot looking good and ready to go. We've got something for everybody's budget. We have a constant rotation of new inventory, including cars, trucks, and SUVs. So if you're out and you're looking for a new car, come by and see me. The Mid-America Auto and Towing, just off Highway 54 in Bowling Green, is a one-stop shop. Like us on Facebook or check out our website, midamericaautoandtowing.com. As many as 50% of people don't take their medication as prescribed. Some never even fill their prescription, even if they don't feel well. Missing or not taking medication can be deadly. For questions about medication, your local HealthMart Pharmacy is here to help. For fast, friendly service and affordable prices every day, visit your local HealthMart Pharmacy, Bowling Green Pharmacy, located right on the square at 8 North Court in Bowling Green. The Eagle 102 starting lineups on KJFM are sponsored by Community State Bank of Missouri in Bowling Green and Troy. All right, your home team starting lineup for tonight, the Louisiana Bulldogs. They'll start a 6'3 senior, wearing number two, Mason Washington. A 5'10 junior, wearing number five, Donovan Richards. A 5'9 senior, wearing number 20, Nathan Perkins. A 6'3 senior, wearing number 23, Jack Logan. And a 6'2 senior, wearing number 34, Ryan Capps. Uh, we'll get Wellsville Middletowns for you coming up in just a little bit. Um, <laughs> Want to give another shout out to Mason Washington, who over at the Bowling Green Invitational Tournament joined the 1,000 Point Club. 1,000 points on a high school career um, is is one of those accepted milestones, if you will. The average player doesn't make it to 1,000 points. You do have some. He joins a club that's got a lot of names. That when you look back, you start talking about basketball. You you run down a list of of uh, young men, young ladies who put up a thousand points and. You know, they're familiar names for a reason. That's a, a good chunk of points to put up during the course of your career. Yeah, that is a lot. And it's something we haven't seen quite as much in the last couple of years. No, you're, you're right. Um, you have to go back um, in a lot of cases a lot farther for the um, elite air, if you will, of when you're talking your 1,500 points and so on and so forth. Because once you're, once you're basically in that 1,000-point ballpark, you're already at that 
top tier of high school basketball that you run into around the area. We'll have more as we set the scene for this evening's ball game after the Louisiana Lady Bulldogs fell to the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers in game one. We had the Hall of Fame induction ceremony and next up the Louisiana Bulldogs playing host to the Wellsville Middletown Tigers. More high school basketball action on the way on Eagle 102. I'm Tylee Mills, the CEO of Pike County Memorial Hospital. You've heard it from your friends, family, and even neighbors. They choose Pike County Memorial Hospital. Quality care from quality people. Pike County Memorial Hospital. Bundle at Pike County Mutual Insurance and say, ask about the great rates on your personal vehicle, farm trucks, big or small, or even your motorcycle and side-by-sides. Stop by and see myself, Corey Buchanan, or Kathy Gam at your hometown insurance company since 1895. Pike County Mutual Insurance on the square in Bowling Green. The Mercantile Bank. Bank of Louisiana is introducing Merv BK Mobile with the ability to take a picture of your check and deposit it into your Mercantile Bank account. You'll never have to worry about getting to the bank. Find more information by visiting MervBK.com. The Mercantile Bank, located on the corner of 3rd and Georgia Streets in downtown Louisiana. Member FDIC. The best coverage of high school sports on KJFM brought to you by Community State Bank of Missouri, County Market in Louisiana, and Bowling Green Pharmacy. Gordon Sanders, Marion Everhart from Louisiana High School, varsity boys action, getting ready to introduce the starting lineups for both ball clubs. And for Wellsville Middletown, they're starting number two, Dylan Alsup. Number 11, Isaac Seaball. Number 15, CJ Curd. Number, <laughs> we'll go with number 41, Logan Percival, and I believe number 35. Carson Huff. Huff. There you go. Okay, those are your starters then for the Wellsville Middletown Tigers. That would be Dylan Alsup, Isaac Seabaugh, CJ Curd, Carson Huff, and Logan Percival. Sometimes it's easier just let the PA announcer take it over. She does such a fine job, and they've got the does jams a heck going. Of a job. They do a great job. Had nice production to it. Um, and the starters, again, Mason Washington. Uh, Look at Nathan Perkins, Jack Logan, Ryan Caps, and Donovan Richards. Those are your starting five for the Louisiana Bulldogs this evening. Mason Washington's going to handle the tap for the Bulldogs. And it's going to be Logan Percival, the junior, for the Wellsville Middletown Tigers. And here we go. Tip controlled by Louisiana. Jack Logan with the ball. Donovan Richards is going to bring it across half court up on the left side as the Bulldogs look to set up their offense and find the first points of the ball game if their offensive possession goes the way that it was drawn up by Coach Smith. Donovan Richards again with it goes left side to Logan. To Richards, Richards will take the open three. It's good. That's a way to start for the Bulldogs. And it probably help if you're watching this that I put up a scoreboard for you. Quickly up court, two points for the Wellsville Middletown Tigers. Driving into the paint, laying the ball off the glass is the freshman Carson Huff. So Louisiana heads back the other direction. Nathan Perkins with the ball to Jack Logan, to Donovan Richards. He's going to eye another three off the rim. No good. High for the rebound is Mason Washington. He gets the ball to Logan inside to Caps. Caps. Nice drop step, puts the ball off the glass. Good for two. It's a 5-2 ball game now. Wellsville Middletown quickly up court. Percival with the shot. And we're just kind of trading buckets here between the two squads. 5-4 is our score. 
This ball game just underway at Louisiana High School. Nathan Perkins drives dishes off to Washington. Washington back up top to Perkins. Left side to Logan. Logan looking for some room in the paint. He kicks out to Perkins. Perkins puts up the three, and it's good. Oh, it seems like uh, the Bulldogs have found their uh, three shoes. Definitely comfortable outside the arc to start off this ball game. 8-4 is the score. Wellsville looking to set things up on offense. That's the freshman, Carson Huff. This is it to right wing. Now back up top into the hands of Hurd. Hurd guarded by Richards. Goes right side back to the freshman, Huff. Wellsville Middletown running their offense, looking for a seam. Huff with the ball outside the arc. They're giving him the three. He's not taking it at the free throw line. Goes right side to Percival. Percival now to Alsup. Alsup to Seabaw. Seabaw finds a little bit of space there. He's guarded by Perkins and then kicks it back out. The cutting Percival gets the ball and then right back out again to Huff. Knocked away. Donovan Richards gets a hand, puts it far down the court. Huff's going for it. Washington's going for it. It goes out of bounds, saying last touch by Louisiana. So Wellsville Milltown will keep possession of the basketball. An inbounds pass quickly across half court. Huff with the ball on the left wing. Goes back up top to Hurd. Hurd picks up his dribble. Gets the ball to Seabaw who spins into the paint. Puts up the shot. No good. Gets his own rebound. And then tries to keep the ball alive. Instead ends up in the hands of Logan. Logan quickly up court. Puts up the shot. Runner, no good. Gets his own rebound. It's stripped away into the hands of the Wellsville Middletown Tigers. Seabaugh with the ball. Now to Huff. As the Tigers working around. Taking a shot from the right elbow is the freshman. Huff shot, no good. Louisiana getting the rebound. Controlling the ball. Getting it up court. Mason Washington, right wing. Richards, Logan, Perkins, Perkins on the left wing, swing it back round up top to Richards, back to Perkins. Perkins eyes the three, he puts it up, no good, out of bounds, saying last touch by the Tigers. So a couple boys went high for the rebound, but went off the hands of the Tigers. 8-4, our score, 4.35 to go. Inbounds pass ends up in the hands of Perkins. Now to Logan, Logan's gonna fake the three. Take a couple steps, put up the shot, it's good. And he'll take the two points. 10-4 is the score. First points of the ball game for Jack Logan. Wellsville Middletown setting up their offense. At the top of the key is Kurt Hurd. He drives to his right, yeah, dribbles inside to put up the shot, and he's fouled. Richard's going to draw the foul on that one as he is arm went across her. Uh, isn't that what they said? They I, did say Richards, didn't they? They I, said Washington. How they ended up giving the foul to Mason Washington. Uh, inbounds pass to Seabaw. Seabaw with a quick spin. Perkins puts the shot up. It's good. And it's a 10-6 ball game with 4.07 on the clock. Donovan Richards is going to bring things up top, set things up for Louisiana. Now he swings to his right, goes back around to Mason Washington who popped outside the key. Perkins trying to feed inside Caps low. Caps kicks it up to a wide open Logan. Puts up the three point shot, no good. Sebo collects the rebound. Not much pressure from the Bulldogs. Uh, Wellsville sets things up, brings it across half court. Uh, left wing back up top to Percival. Right side to Huff, Huff being guarded by Washington. Loose ball stolen away by Perkins. Perkins cross half court. It's going to drive to the basket, dish it off to Washington. Washington up and in for two. Now full court pressure from the dogs. Louisiana executing well on that two-on-one break. Now the Tigers quickly up court. Huff with the ball, oh, and, and he's going to be fouled. Yeah, Logan's going to pick up the foul as he gave him a little extra, excuse me, foul. And that should be the first on Logan. 12-6, our score, 3.08 to go in the first quarter of play. Quick inbounds pass. A couple new players in the ball game for Wellsville Middletown. Jacob Mandrell into the game. Seaball goes down low to Percival. Percival with that right hand even behind the basket. That's yep. his second. Look good doing it the first time as well. So 
to Louisiana offensively. Donovan Richards pulls up from the free throw line. It's no good. Seaball with the rebound. Curd gets the ball right back to Seaball. He goes to Percival, finds a cutting Seaball off the glass. It's good. Seaball with the bucket. And timeout. Louisiana's going to talk about it. It's a 12-10 ball game. Louisiana Bulldogs lead by two over the Wellsville Middletown Tigers. You're listening to Area High School Basketball Action on Eagle 102. Ingram Plumbing has always been known for its outstanding plumbing service. But did you know that Ingram's is also the largest retail plumbing supply store in the area? We carry Delta faucets, a complete line of Whirlpool tubs and showers, jacuzzi pumps, and many other specialty items. Stop by Ingram Plumbing today, Highway 61 Bowling Green. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102, brought to you by People's Bank and Trucks, State Farm Insurance, Cindy Blaylock, Agent, and Perkins Electrical Services. So after Louisiana jumped out to an early lead, Wellsville Middletown's closed the gap. It's a two-point ball game. 2.25 to go in the first quarter, 12-2 our score. Nice pass to a cutting Mason Washington from Jack Logan. Yeah, nice assist in there, give and go. And quickly back are the Tigers. Percival again, he's got a little home that he likes down there on that right baseline. Put the shot up and in, and they're back to trailing by only two. Well, Louisiana's going to have to find a way to stop Percival down low on that block, and I'm not sure if Ryan Caps is the answer or not. Driving, putting up the layup, Nathan Perkins gets the roll. Perkins now with five in the first quarter. Wellsville Middletown bringing it across half court. Washington gets a hand on the ball. Seaball comes away with the loose ball. Pass to Percival, who fakes the cut to Seaball. They've played together for a while. Puts up the shot. No good. Caps gets it. Quickly now to Perkins, who's going to drive. He misses the free throw, or misses the layup. Loose ball rebound. Gets it. Now in the hands of Donovan Richards, who puts it up. It's no good. And it's Percival who comes away with it for the Tigers. Seaball across half court. Seaball now in the left wing. Three-point shot, good. And all of a sudden, it's a one-point game. Seaball with seven points in the first quarter to lead all Tigers in scoring. 16-15 is the score. We're under a minute left now. Richards left side to Perkins. There's a cutting Washington. Washington puts it up, rolls around, no good. Out of bounds, no. Okay, now out of bounds, last touch by Louisiana. It was originally saved that time by Mandrell of the Tigers, and then when he was trying to make a pass, knocked out of bounds by Mason Washington. So the Tigers inbounding the ball. Just half-court pressure from Louisiana. Washington pick him up as approaching half-court. Seaball handling it, going right wing. Now right back up top to Seaball, who goes uh, Looks like Wellsville to look, Curd. may want to go for the last shot here. 31 seconds left. Looks like they're going to just pass it around up top, Curd and Seaball. Louisiana applying a little bit of pressure. Curd gets away with the travel, goes left side. Now skip pass right side to Seaball, who's going to drive into the paint, put up the runner, rolls around, no good. Perkins with the rebound, stripped away by Percival, but out of bounds, last touch by the Tigers. So Louisiana with plenty of time to do something, 13.8 seconds and a one-point lead if they're looking to stretch that lead a little bit after quarter one. Donovan Richards cross half court. We're under 10 seconds, six seconds. Richards sees some lane, drives, finger roll off the glass. That's good for two. And that is how the first quarter ends. Louisiana on top of Wellsville Middletown by the score of 18 to 15. We got second quarter action coming your way next here on Eagle 102. Farmers, the crew at Mike's Tire and Service Center is here to serve you. They know the hours you put in, which makes it difficult to get that equipment in for service. Therefore, they offer on-the-farm tire repair. Hi, folks. My name is Cody Kirkendall, Mike's Tire and Service Center, located on Business Highway 61 in Bowling Green. It's a great time to buy or sell a home. I'm Vicki Cadwalder, and I take pride in offering skills that make the process go smoothly from beginning to end. Even after closing, I enjoy staying in touch and being there to help you if you have any other needs or questions. Call me and we'll create a personalized plan just for you. Vicki Cadwalder Real Estate, loving our small town life. Hear all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth, sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. 
Gordon Sanders, Marion Everhart broadcasting from Louisiana High School. The Louisiana Bulldogs have a three-point lead in a game that I have to assume is not going to keep moving at this pace. Oh, I don't know. I tell you what, I've got to tell you, this is a different Wallsville team than I saw um, quite a while ago. I mean, we saw them basically the first week of the season, but this is definitely an improved group. No, that's true. If this pace keeps up, you know, then then you're having a, you know, a high school score that's – you know, that's in the ballpark of, of uh, one that you would term as an offensive battle. There you 18 go. to 15 right now as the second quarter is just underway. Wellsville Middletown with the ball. Percival going to try to keep him off the block. Shots put up. Right wing no good that time by Mandrell. Louisiana with the ball. Quickly across half court. Donovan Richards pass to Mason Washington. He's going to drive on the left baseline. Look to put up a shot and he's fouled. And Washington will go to the free throw line. He'll get the opportunity to shoot two from the charity strike. Washington with four points on the evening. And we've got a timeout. We'll take one as well. 7.34 to go here in the half. Bulldogs on top of the Tigers. You're listening to High School Basketball on Eagle 102. Community State Bank of Missouri in Bowling Green and Troy, where the number one priority is the customer and adding new services to help simplify your life and building a strong, high-performance financial services organization. Community State Bank in Bowling Green and Troy, your community bank since 1887, member FDIC. Follow area high school sports throughout the season on Eagle 102, brought to you by Mike's Tire and Service Center, Yolia Landscape Supply, and a taste of Philly. Mason Washington at the free throw line coming out of the timeout. He's going to be shooting two as he was fouled, taking the ball to the bucket on the left baseline. The first free throws of the evening for either club. Up and good. Makes the first. We'll look to repeat that process. It's no good. Out of bounds, I think. You know, it looked like it was last touch by Seaboss saying last touch by Logan. So the Tigers will inbound the ball. A little bit of pressure. Nathan Perkins. You're going to take a seat while White Harrison checks in. 19-15 our score. 7.34 to go in the first half as second quarter is just underway. Substitutions as well for Wellsville Middletown. Huff has the ball across half court. Harrison is sticking to Seaball. Percival up top, guarded by Richards. Then the right elbow, a pass, errant pass. Tried to collect it with Seaball, went out of bounds, last touch by the Tigers. The pressure that time from Mason Washington made that a difficult pass. 19-15 yeah. the score. Donovan Richards crossed half court for Louisiana, goes right side to Harrison. Jack Logan, top of the key, left elbow, he'll shoot. Yeah, I'll tell you what, if you don't see an open man, just drop it yourself. He looked to pass, and there was enough room to, to knock down the set shot from the left elbow. Two points for Logan. Gives him four on the game. Louisiana's up 21-15, as Wellsville Middletown sets things up, looks to run their offense. Seaball kicks the ball to Alsup. Now driving baseline, trying to force it to Percival. Instead, Louisiana comes away with the steal. Jack Logan to Donovan Richards. Harrison right side outside the arc as they're setting back up their offense. Logan now looks to drive, and he's going to be fouled. Starts to drive and put up the runner. So it looks like it's going to be Mandrell with the foul. Which will be his first. On the inbounds pass to Mason Washington, he puts it high up the glass and good for two. Louisiana starting to spread this lead a little bit more once again. The Tigers looking for their first points of the second quarter. They find Percival. Percival puts it off the glass and good. He's responsible for eight of their 17. Louisiana crossed half court. Logan with the ball to Harrison. Harrison at the top of the key. Bounce pass left side to Richards. Richards guarded by the freshman Huff. Harrison with the ball. He's going to drive into the paint, then kick it back out to Logan, who's going to penetrate. Right elbow shot up, no good. Loose ball rebound collected that time by Alsip. Alsip to Seabaugh. Seabaugh across half court, picked up by Harrison. He's going to dribble right side, 
momentarily loses the handle, gives up his dribble, goes up top to Huff. Huff left side, they swing it around left wing, now back around right wing. Back to the left, working it around the perimeter, looking for a cutting Percival inside. He's been what's worked best for the Tigers so far this evening. Find Percival in the paint, puts up an off-balance shot that time, no good. Rebound collected by the Bulldogs. Donovan Richards tries to bounce it inside that time to Caps. Looks like it went off the foot of Huff. So possession will stay with the Bulldogs. Donovan Richards, Wyatt Harrison. Apparently we've missed something. Big cheering crowd. Caps takes a seat on the bench. Louisiana working things around on offense. Up tops, Mason Washington. He's going to drive, put up the shot. It's no good. Seaball coming away with the rebound. We'll explain that uh, that cheer for you coming up here in just a couple moments. Oh, you must know it because I don't. I see a player on the court that I don't have a jersey for. The young uh, Percival. Trying to get the ball inside, working around, shot, three-pointer put up on the wing, no good. Doesn't fall that time. Doesn't fall that time for the Wellsville Middletown Tigers. Louisiana coming away with the rebound. They will inbound the ball. Um, a young man who was an active part of their sports program until he had an automobile accident. Oh, is that Angel out there? It is, and, and he's making his first appearance for the Louisiana Bulldogs in a sporting event again since that accident that was now well, what the better I part of two. I did not recognize Angel out there. We're number 11 for the Bulldogs. Well, about two years ago, right? Uh, Ballpark. Yeah, right it's around there. feels yeah. like it. Harrison with the ball for Louisiana into Angel's hands. Angel's going to drive, put yeah. the shot up off the glass. And that's what we'd like to see. And the fans appreciating that effort. It's good to see Angel back out there in the uniform. Angel Lalo with his first points of the season. Steal, Wyatt Harrison drives, lays it up and in, good for two. I don't understand why Wyatt didn't just dunk it. <laughs> just shy of that, but a fine form <laughs> on the layup. Quickly, Wellsville Middletown gets it down court and into the hands of Percival. Percival puts up the bucket. It's good for two points. 27-19 is the score, 331 on the clock. Nathan Perkins. Drives, puts up the shot, and he's fouled. And they're going to say it was all the floor, so they'll inbound it from underneath the basket. And it's the freshman who's an interesting player, Carson Huff. Um, Huff's going to take a seat right now. Um, shows a fair amount of poise for a freshman. Harrison with the ball, goes inside the caps, couple quick dribbles down below the basket, loses control, gets it right back, finds the handle, puts it up and in off the glass, good for two. And Louisiana's now turned it into a 10-point lead. The Tigers going to try to set things back up again on offense. Curd with the ball, now into the hands of Percival in the paint. He kicks it back out. Alsup with the ball up top to Curd again. He's got Seba on his right, doesn't go that direction. Left side to Alsup, back to Curd. Curd. Takes the three-pointer from the top of the key. No good. Washington with the rebound. Back to Caps. Back to Washington. Washington sees the seam. Drives the paint. Lays it up. Finger roll. Off the rim. No good. Rebound collected by Wellsville Middletown. Dylan Oslop, Alsop, the junior, with the rebound. Curd calling for him to move on offense. Swinging up top would be Keaton Marshall, who's into the ball game, And... They throw the ball away, so they turn it over into the hands of the Bulldogs. Ball's out of bounds. Louisiana will be inbounding the ball. Angel getting a big hand as he heads towards the bench. Donovan Richards in the ball game, along with Mason Washington, Ryan Capps, Nathan Perkins, and Wyatt Harrison. Screen by Capps. Gets the ball right back on the give and go. Nice pass from Richards. Good bucket by Capps. 31-19 is the score. Wellsville, Coach Steve Lastman wants to talk to the Tigers. They've got a timeout. 31-19 with 2.10 to go in the first half. You're listening to Area High School Basketball Action on Eagle 102. As many as 50% of people don't take their medication as prescribed. 
Missing or not taking medication can be deadly. For questions about medication, visit your local Healthmark Pharmacy, Bowling Green Pharmacy, located right on the square at 8 North Court in Bowling Green. The area's best coverage of high school sports is on Eagle 102. Brought to you by Pike County Health Department. Home health and hospice in all parts. 31-19, the score, two minutes and ten seconds to go in the first half of play. The Louisiana Bulldogs, after uh, jumping out to an early lead, the Tigers tied it up. It was a close ball game at the end of one quarter of play, and then the Louisiana Bulldogs have owned the yes, second quarter. They've basically taken advantage of all the turnovers and the uh, missed shots that uh, Wellsville's put up and really, really contained Percival inside. Louisiana doing what they're needing to do defensively, making the adjustments they need to make, and and you know finding a decent stride on offense as well. Huff has the ball at the top of the key for the Wellsville Middletown Tigers. Cross court skip pass to Curd. Curd's going to put up the contested three. It's no good. Might have been Caps getting a hand on that. Good hustle by Richards to keep the ball in play. But Huff of the Tigers comes away with it. Huff now to Alsup into the hands of Seabaugh. Seabaugh and Percival have been the best connection for the Tigers so far this evening. Percival finds a cutting Huff. Huff looking for the foul, didn't get it. Louisiana comes away with the ball. Wyatt Harrison quickly up court and off the glass. Oh, Harrison give him four here in the second quarter alone and brings it to 33 to 19 with 119 to go here in the half. Crossed half court, setting things up. Curd for the Tigers. Curd guarded by Richards. Trying to get the ball inside to Percival. Tries to bounce it in. Goes off the foot of Richards. And it's going to be the Tigers inbounding the ball. Kurt will be the trigger man under y the basket. Yolola and Logan return to the ball game. Pass inside to Seaball. Seaball guarded by Angel <laughs> Laloa. I like it. Angel's like I haven't gotten to have a foul in quite a while. Let's, let me have one. So Seaball is going to go to the free throw line. First trip to the charity straight for Wellsville this evening. Again, 33-19 our score with 106 left to go in the first half of play. Seaball hits that first free throw. And has one more coming. It's up and in. Thirty-three twenty-one is the score. Louisiana gets it across half court. And the travel's going to be called. It'll head back the other direction. Little or no pressure from the Bulldogs still across half court. Curd has the ball as he dribbles across the Bulldog near the top of the key. Bounce pass left side to Huff. Huff now finds a, a cutting C ball. C ball goes back to Huff who's down in the blocks, three on one, puts up the shot, no good. Keeping it alive that time would be Wellsville Middletown and then into the hands of Logan. Logan tries to go ahead to Perkins and it's Curd that time. That breaks up the pass. He goes into the Tigers bench. Last touch by the Tigers, balls out of bounds. Louisiana will inbound the ball. Angel Lalo on the court along with Nathan Perkins, Ryan Caps, Jack Logan, Donovan Richards inbounds the ball. Gets it to Logan, who gives it right back to Richards, who heads to the top of the key. Looking to set things up on the offense. Laloa cutting through, gets the ball, bounce pass. A little too low to Caps. Goes out of bounds. I think they're saying last touch by the Tigers. It's kicked by the Tigers, I think is what the call was. Logan now into Perkins to Richards. Right side to Logan, who's going to swing it up top to Laloa. Left side. To Richards, Richards, Donovan with three-pointer off the glass, no good. Caps collects the rebound. Jack Logan's going to drive, has it knocked away from behind. Now quickly in transition, trying to get the ball up the court. The Wellsville Middletown Tigers as time expires. A shot thrown up from Donovan Richards, and that's how the first half ends. 33-21 to 21 is the score. The Louisiana Bulldogs leading the Wellsville Middletown Tigers. Halftime show is on the way. You're listening to Area High School Basketball Action on Eagle 102. The Eagle 102 Halftime Report is coming up. Brought to you by Cellular and Satellite Center in Bowling Green. 
Cellular and Satellite Center is the only stop you need to make when it comes to satellite providers, offering direct TV and dish network along with antenna installs. Now, special message from Matthew Niemeyer himself. If you call an 800 number and they say we will be the local installer, they are wrong. Contact Matthew at Cellular and Satellite Center in Bowling Green, your, your local authorized dealer. From the classic cheesesteak and rich crab cakes to the Philadelphian favorite water ice, a taste of Philly in Bowling Green is a fan favorite. A meal ready for you before or after the game, and game day jerseys are welcome. Open seven days a week. A taste of Philly. Business Highway 54 West in Bowling Green. This is Tracy Brookshire with Pike County Health Department Home Health and Hospice. Did you know our agency currently offers over 30 programs and services to our communities? The Women, Infant, and Children's Program, Infant Through Adult Immunizations, Car Seat Safety Courses, Diabetes Counseling, and of course our amazing Home Health and Hospice programs, just to name a few. Learn more by visiting our website at pikecountyhealth.org and see what services you and your family could benefit from. Bringing you all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth sponsored by family drug in louisiana it's now time for the eagle 102 halftime report on kjfm sponsored by cellular and satellite center in bowling green gordon sanders marion everhart at the half 33 21 is the score of the louisiana bulldogs handling the wellsville middletown tigers at this point in the game that around the first quarter of play you know, it was kind of even. Yeah, at the end of the first quarter, Bulldogs had the lead 18-15, to 15, and really I think that the key here in the second quarter has been the fact that Louisiana is able to shut down Logan Percival in the paint from down low. They were able to make that adjustment. Uh, Percival had six in the first, was held to four in the second, but more importantly, they've kind of kept him out of the uh, position of rebounds. Yeah, not only was he not able to rebound as anywhere near as effectively um, down low, they've been the shots that he's had. Um, especially towards the back half of that second quarter, weren't necessarily good looks. So I, I think that Louisiana's going to have to keep that up here in the second half. Um, you know, really the, the pace of the game has gone pretty well. They're playing, really they're playing to Louisiana's pace, what they want. Uh, Louisiana's control in this game. They've had some turnovers that probably shouldn't have had, but at the same time they're doing a good job of capitalizing on the turnovers they're causing uh, and putting points on the board. You know, Jack Logan has done some nice assists in there. We've seen uh, some nice assists. We've seen some nice uh, jumpers as, you know, he looked to make a pass. Cellular and Satellite Center. At the half, 33-21 is the score. Again, the Louisiana Bulldogs leading the Wellsville Middletown Tigers. Had a pair of basketball games this evening, games that were rescheduled from Friday night, originally supposed to be played on Friday with the induction ceremony into the Louisiana High School um, Hall of Fame scheduled for the the 2021 class scheduled for friday evening between those two ball games the entire event was pushed to saturday night this evening and we had the girls varsity game which wellsville middletown ended up pulling away from louisiana down the stretch to win that one then the ceremony that took place at halftime of that game um, the 2021 class for louisiana inducted jason calvin uh, was in attendance for um, his induction this evening, Nakia Shepard as well, Roger Walker, a number of members including Coach Geschwender and Coach Jessberg of the 1986 football team, the Class 2A state champions, the only yep. football championship for Louisiana High School. Um, uh, they were inducted into the Hall of Fame as well. We had mentioned a little bit earlier in the week regarding Louisiana graduate Jim Scott. He was a 1986 graduate, a two-sport athlete for Louisiana went on to um, contribute, give back in the football community through coaching in Missouri and in Texas. Um, it was in 2015 when Jim Scott was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. He passed away at the beginning of 2017. He, his family was hoping to be in attendance Absolutely. this evening, and due to Mother Nature weather conditions, they were not able to make the trip and, and come this direction. So. Uh, decided to the school decided to induct him next, next year. year. He'll yeah. be part of the 2022 class, and they look forward to being here for that presentation. All right. Well, that's going to take care of the uh, Sailor Satellite Center halftime report. We've got third quarter coming your way next here on Eagle 102. Cellular and Satellite Center is the only stop you need to make when it comes to satellite providers, offering direct TV and dish network along with antenna installs. Now, a special message from Matthew Niemeyer himself. If you call an 800 number and they say we will be the local installer, they are wrong. 
Contact Matthew at Sailor and Satellite Center in Bowling Green, your local authorized dealer. Farmers, the crew at Mike's Tire and Service Center is here to serve you. They know the hours you put in, which makes it difficult to get that equipment in for service. Therefore, they offer on-the-farm tire repair. Hi, folks. My name is Cody Kirkendall, Mike's Tire and Service Center, located on Business Highway 61 in Bowling Green. It's a great time to buy or sell a home. I'm Vicki Cadwalder, and I take pride in offering skills that make the process go smoothly from beginning to end. Even after closing, I enjoy staying in touch and being there to help you if you have any other needs or questions. Call me, and we'll create a personalized plan just for you. Vicki Cadwalder real estate loving our small town life follow area high school sports on kjfm radio brought to you by young enterprises family drug and brown smokehouse meats second half just underway 33 21 is the score louisiana bulldogs on top of the wellsville middletown tigers huff with the ball for wellsville middletown he's fouled he's going to be going to the free throw line number 35 is a freshman for Wellsville Middletown. First free throw shot up and no good. He had two points on the evening. Chance to make it three. He's got that same chance again here. It's up off the rim, no good. Rebounded by Washington. Richards gonna set up the offense for the Louisiana Bulldogs. Goes right side to Logan. Logan tries to go inside to Caps. Getting a hand on it, stealing away that time is Huff. Huff now crossed half court. Huff's going to get the ball to Curd. Curd left side. Now into the hands of Alsup. Then back to Curd right side. He's guarded by Richards. Jack Logan's one guarding Alsup. Right side to, to Seaball. Seaball to Huff. Huff's going to just kick it back out to Curd at the top of the key again. I can see Wellsville's wanting to be patient, but at the same time, you don't have much time, and there we proves my point. You got the five-second call and a turnover for Wellsville Middletown. Tight pressure by Bulldog defenders that time, resulting in the turnover. 33-21 is the score with the third quarter just underway. Donovan Richards to Washington, back to Richards. Richards now to Logan. Logan's going to drive to the paint. Spin, put up the shot with the right hand. It's good. From about six. Two points for Jack Logan. The first two points of the second half for the Louisiana Bulldogs. Wellsville Middletown. Seaboss slashing into the paint. Jumps up. Puts the shot up off the glass. The scoop shot. It's good for two. Give him 11 in this matchup. Caps with the ball. Left elbow. Washington cut to the basket. Yeah. That's where. A little too quickly before Caps was able to uh, hit him. Caps threw it where Washington was, and it's now Wellsville Middletown ball. Curd trying to get the ball that time to Alsup. Washington getting a hand on it. It went out of bounds. Last touch by the Bulldogs. Alsup gets it into Curd, right back to Alsup. He's up on the left wing. Now goes to Huff, who's going to look to drive baseline. Nice bucket that time. Not one that, not one that Ryan Caps was a fan of because that was Huff driving around Caps to lay it up and in off the glass that time. Two points for the freshman to make it just a 10-point lead for Louisiana. Nathan Perkins into the ball game. Bounce pass to Washington. Washington is going to look to drive left baseline. Drop the shoulder. Call a foul on the floor. And it's going to go against Huff, who really thought he had position that time for the charge. So Huff's going to take a seat. Checking back into the ball game is Mandrell. Louisiana inbounds. Now they find a cutting Jack Logan shot up off the rim. No good. Loose ball. Donovan Richards gets it. Nathan Perkins a drive. Dish it off to Logan. Caps looking to get it back to cutting Logan. Wellsville getting a hand on it that time. Donovan Richards collecting the loose ball. He gets it into the hands of Nathan Perkins. Nathan Perkins at the top of the key. He's going to look to spin into the paint. Loses his balance. Get call, gets called for the travel as he's trying to get the ball to Jack Logan. And it goes right back to Wellsville Middletown. 35-25 our score. The Tigers slowly bringing the ball up court. Curd's going to be picked up as he comes across half court by Donovan Richards. 
He goes left side as the Tigers are working around the perimeter. Try to get inside the cutting. Sea ball batted away. Now the loose ball is going to be put up from three. It's no good by Alsup. Rebound collected by the Bulldogs. Mason Washington cross half court. Seaball going for the steal. Washington's going to drive, kick it off to Perkins. Perkins left baseline shot, up no good. Caps with the rebound, out to Richards. Washington, top of the key, puts the ball on the floor. He's going to drive, nothing there. Perkins, nothing there, gets the ball to Richards. Richards left arc, now to Perkins, top of the key. Swinging it back around would be Donovan Richards. And Louisiana resets their offense. Washington to Perkins. Left wing, up top to Logan. Logan will take the three-point shot off the rim, no good. Richards with the rebound. He sees a little space, puts up the shot off the glass. It's no good. Rebound collected by Alsop. He gets it to Seaball. Seaball crossed half court. Find Percival down low, right side. That's the shot he likes. It was Logan blocking the first shot. Percival got his own rebound and put back up the second. That was exactly what they'd stopped Percival from doing in the first half, Marianne. And it sure was, and I tell you what, I looked down there and Logan had that nice block, but Percival was able to recover. Mason Washington driving into the paint for the Bulldogs, and he's fouled. He'll go to the charity stripe, shoot two. Oh, no, they're going to call it on the floor line. Yeah, good job by Percival last time around pursuing yeah. his shot that time and getting then the easy bucket. Nathan Perkins going to take a seat. Wyatt Harrison coming into the ball game for Louisiana. Richards trying to inbound, gets it to Harrison, left wing. Bounce pass inside to Caps. Takes a quick dribble, puts the ball off the glass, no good. Rebound that time collected by Hurd. Slows things down for the Tigers as he crossed that half court line. Has the ball above his head, guarded by Richards. Kind of looks like the Bulldogs are playing a box and one. As Wyatt uh, Harrison's not leaving uh, Seaball side. Kurt gives up his dribble, then also gets it right back to him. They're just passing it around on the left wing right now, trying to create something inside, looking for the mismatch. Now into the paint, putting up the shot is no good. Mandrell, Seaball was calling for the ball as he had boxed out a little, little smaller Harrison. Now trying to feed it inside, stolen away by Percival. And it's back into the hands of the Wellsville Middletown Tigers. Yolola set to check in at the next dead ball for the Dogs. Curd brings it across half court, guarded by Washington. Bounce pass left side. Two man drill. Has it stolen away by Washington. He's got a little bit of space. He drives, puts the ball up, no good off the glass. The follow up, good by Donovan Richards. And the Tigers are setting things back up on offense after headed back the other direction. Trying to get the ball to Percival again on the left block. Loose ball saying kicked by Richards. Okay, I'm confused. I feel certain they forgot to put the two points up for the Bulldogs on Donovan Richards' bucket. We have not seen those two points go up yet. You're correct. Okay, so our score is 37-27. It's a 10-point game right now, even though those other two points haven't shown up on the scoreboard yet. Percival. Gets the ball that time to Mandrell, puts up the shot. It's no good. Out of bounds, last touch by Percival, who is crashing for the rebound. Uh, now you hear the uh, the home fans. The, the fans are starting to uh, point out that the score hasn't changed yet on the scoreboard. Wellsville Middletown fans said if it's that easy, we'd like some extra points yeah, too. No Wellsville inbounds the ball, Seaball who's played well, he's a senior. You would expect him to be bringing that leadership this year as they've got a, a pretty young ball club, but they do have a couple upperclassmen on there. Seaball being one of those, finds two points. Now they get the steal back into the hands of Seaball. Seaball drives, looks to lay up the ball, no foul called, and he misses the shot, goes back into the hands of the Louisiana Bulldogs. Harrison passes up the three-point shot. Richards outside the arc, guarded by Huff. Baloa looks to set him a screen, then pops back out. Richards, right side to Logan. Logan gives up his dribble to Angel. Angel drives, kicks out to Harrison. Harrison from just past the free throw line, shots up off the rim twice, no good. Seaball collects the rebound. Seaball gets it to Huff, who's crossed half court. Huff eyeballs the three-pointer, decides not to take it. 
And it looks like we're going to have a foul called away from the ball. Oh, absolutely. Holding going to be called on. I thought they said Angel, but no, I, that he, is who they called on. Oh, I think, yeah, no, he said on Levin. So that's the second on the low. Huff is inbounding the ball. Quickly gets the ball in off the glass. Good. Jacob Mandrell, two points. And it's a 37-31 ball game. Under a minute to go here in the third. Logan with the ball. Jumps into the paint. Puts up the off-balance shot. It's no good. Rebound collected that time by Alsip. Alsip gets it to Seaball. Seaball being hounded by Angel Liloa, who's going to pick up the foul, which will be his third of the ball game. It'll be the third team foul here this half for the Dogs. the three-pointer just knocked down by Huff. Makes it 37-34 with 35 seconds to go in the ballgame. In the third quarter of play, Mason Washington with the ball to Angel Laloa. Goes left side to Kenny McCormick, who's in for the Louisiana Bulldogs. Laloa now to Hall. Hall, uh, Laloa back up top to McCormick. Harrison inside to Washington. Washington's going to put up the shot. It's no good, but he's fouled. So Washington heads to the free throw line. 16 seconds on the clock. Louisiana with a three-point lead now. As the third quarter is winding down, Mason Washington with an opportunity to stretch that a little bit. This is the first one. First free throw, no good. He's got one more coming. Mason Washington at the line again. Next shot's. Up, rolls around, and in. It's good. 38-34 now the score as the Louisiana Bulldogs have a lead and the Wellsville Middletown Tigers have the ball and will look for a last shot. Seaball is going to drive into the paint, guarded by Laloa, puts up the shot, and is going to get the foul, heads to the free throw line. He's going to be shooting two with a chance to cut that lead in half. 4.1 seconds on the clock, 38-34 is the score. Seabaugh's first is up, front of the rim, back of the rim, backboard, back of the rim again. Touches everything, yeah. So the first is no good, and the senior will get another. It's up and in. Louisiana inbounds, Washington cross half court, three seconds, he drives, puts up the shot off the glass, it's good at the buzzer. Louisiana takes a five point lead to the fourth quarter of play. Louisiana leads 40 to 35. You're listening to Bulldogs basketball action on Eagle 102. As many as 50% of people don't take their medication as prescribed. Missing or not taking medication can be deadly. For questions about medication, visit your local Health Mart pharmacy, Bowling Green Pharmacy, located right on the square at 8 North Court in Bowling Green. Hello, this is Brittany Hinkey with Community State Bank of Missouri. Now is the perfect time to start saving for retirement. Community State Bank offers competitive rates on traditional and Roth IRAs. Unlike most investments, some contributions may be tax deductible and will grow either tax deferred or tax free. Come in and see one of our IRA representatives in Troy or Bowling Green to maximize your savings opportunities today. Community State Bank of Missouri, your hometown community bank since 1887, member FDIC. Hear all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth, sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. Going to the fourth quarter of action, the Louisiana Bulldogs have a five-point lead. They're up 40-35 to 35 over the Wellsville Middletown Tigers um, in a game where Louisiana's led by as many as... At least 10. Yeah, they, they were in double digits, I think a 12-point yeah, lead at one point. Yeah, that sounds right. In time, um, but Wellsville Middletown clawed back. Well, they did, and this is the four quarters we're talking about for Louisiana that they had to put together to win this game. So we'll see how the fourth quarter goes. Inbound pass almost stolen away. Now Wellsville Middletown quickly gets it up court. Mandrell puts it off the glass. It's good for two. Back to a three-point game. 7.42 to go in the fourth quarter of play, which is just underway. 40-37 to 37 is our score. Washington with the ball. He goes right side, caps. 
Now to Logan. And it's going to be an offensive foul. That's going to go against Richards. I think on an illegal screen. That would explain the flying bodies in the paint. <laughs> so full court pressure for the Bulldogs on the inbounds. Huff trying to get it in. We got a timeout on the floor. Coach Lastman wants to talk to his Tigers. We'll hear from some of our sponsors. 7.33 to go in the ball game. Dogs on top by three as you're listening to high school basketball on Eagle 102. From the classic cheesesteak and rich crab cakes to the Philadelphian favorite water ice, a taste of Philly in Bowling Green is a fan favorite. A meal ready for you before or after the game. And game day jerseys are welcome. Open seven days a week. A taste of Philly. Business Highway 54 West in Bowling Green. High school sports on your area sports leader, Eagle 102. Brought to you by Bowling Green Tractor. Vicki Cadwalder Real Estate and Ingram Plumbing. The Bulldogs lead the Tigers. Louisiana over Wellsville Middletown, 40 to 37. Fourth quarter still got a long way to go. This ball game still a long way to go. Louisiana oh, yeah, has a three-point lead. But Louisiana's going to have to tighten down their defense um, if they're hoping to stay into this one. Really, you know, feeding that ball down low to Caps. You know, he's got Percival he's working against down low, so maybe some outside shots kind of help that out a little bit. The Louisiana lead to 37 is the score. Inbounding the ball is Huff for Wellsville Middletown. Stolen away by Jack Logan. He's going to drive into the paint, put up the shot. It rolls around, drops in for two, 42-37. Now the score back to a five-point lead for Louisiana. Give Logan eight on the night. And we got an offensive foul. Jim and Mark talked about it on Tuesday night. Probably the one of the best players around the area to uh, take a charge is Ryan Caps, and he just showed that uh, right now. A fundamentally sound player who takes up uh, a lot of space on both ends of the court and can really make his presence despite the fact that he's six and change. Yeah. Like, I mean, he's a, just a, a tall six foot. Maybe he, you know, he has an impact on the glass because he holds his position and he's just fundamentally solid. 7-14 to go in the ballgame. 42-37 score. Donovan Richards with the ball. Up top now to Washington. Left side to Nathan Perkins. Perkins to Logan at the top of the key. To Washington. Right wing. Now popping back up top is Richards. Left side to Logan. Perkins out now near half court. Goes to Richards on the right side. Offense rotating through the paint. Coming up top is Washington. Washington ends up with the ball back in his hands. Perkins now. Caps is trying to block out and keep Percival on his backside. No luck getting an open look inside right now. It's Donovan Richards who's going to swing it back around to the top of the key and look to reset the offense for the Louisiana Bulldogs. Jack Logan's going to shoot from the left elbow. Rolls around and in. It's good for two. He's in double figures now tonight. It's going to be Curd bringing it across half court for the Tigers. Going left side. Now finding a cutting Seaball, though. Seaball's cut was right into Ryan Caps. Caps is going to end up picking the foul up here. I think they're going to say it was not in the act. No, they are going to say it was yep. in the act of shooting, and Seaball's going to go to the free throw line. He's been three for four tonight. When he initiated the uh, spin move there, I'm not 100% sure he knew that he was going to run into Ryan Caps. Oh, in and out is the second free throw. Caps with the rebound. Caps to Richards. Richards cross half court. Jack Logan's going to drive. Baseline dish it off to Ryan Caps who puts up the shot. It's no good, but he's fouled. He's going to be going to the free throw line. Caps looking for his first points here of the second half. I think Seabaugh's the one who's going to pick up that foul. Now scratch that. They Mandrell. gave it to Mandrell. And that's his third. Ryan Caps' first free throw is up. It's no good. Highs the second, it's up and good. 45-38 our score. It's Curd being guarded by Washington, having a tough time getting it across half court. And now they're gonna call a foul on Washington. 
And we're shooting free throws from here on out. It's a 17 foul, Washington second. Kurt at the free throw line. Free throws up, no good. Washington fighting for the rebound. Seaball fighting for the rebound. Out of bounds. They're saying last touch by Washington. So Seaball will be inbounding. Now instead it's going to be Kurd who's inbounding. Swinging it around. Percival, who's been kind of quiet here in the fourth quarter, gets it to Seaball. Seaball guard by Richards gets it to Percival. Swinging it around, looking for something. The paint getting a hand on it is Washington. So that hustle by Washington, even though the ball was recovered by Mandrell, was then thrown away yeah. as his pass was errant that was intended for Seaball. 45-38 the score, an eight-point lead for the Bulldogs with under five and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Richards right side to Logan. Logan now to Perkins. Perkins going to look to drive into the paint. Nothing there. Kicks it back out to Logan, who will come into the paint, put up the runner off the rim. No good. Logan fighting for the rebound, but Seaball comes away with it. And then Seaball gets it to Kurd, who's going to bring it across half court. Guarded by Perkins. Left side to Seaball. Seaball now there at the top of the key. Spins into the paint, puts up the shot. It rolls around and goes down. Bucket's good, and we've got a whistle. I'm not sure what they're what they're calling here. I don't know if they're oh. checking the score, but that's the same score we have. 45, 40, 448 to go here in the ball game. Figure out real quick what the whistle's for. And apparently it's nothing important because it nothing changed. 45, 40, Louisiana on top by five. Richards cross half court, goes left side to Caps. Caps and Washington both outside the arc right now. Perkins has the ball. He's going to drive past free throw line, spins, puts up the shot, no good. Loose ball rebound collected by Percival. Percival gets it to Seaball. So the Tigers looking to set up their offense again. Seaball loses the ball, hustling for it. That time is Richards, and I think we're going to we're going to see Richards pick up the foul. That is his third. Seabow kind of lost the handle on it, and as he was collecting the handle, Richard collected his hand, and he's at the free throw line. One and one for Seabow. Shots up, no good. Rebound being fought for. Went out of bounds, last touch by the Tigers. Nathan Perkins and Percival both on the floor that time. Washington inbounds it to Richards. He's not going to be picked up till near half court by Kurd. Richardson Richardson go to Washington. Now back to Caps. Perkins, who's up on the right wing with the ball, looking for something inside. Nothing there. Goes to Logan. Logan's going to be left open for three. Puts up the shot. No good. Rebound being fought for by Percival and Caps. Caps hits the floor. Richards hits the floor. Seaball comes away with the rebound. And he's crossed half court. He's going to drive into the paint, look to put up the shot. Blocked by Richards. Nothing there. Seaball gets the ball back. Goes to Kurt at the top of the key. Seaball wheels around to the top again. He's going to put up the three-point shot off the rim. No good. It was contested. Didn't fall. Washington came away with the rebound. Now into the hands of Nathan Perkins. Outside the arc right wing. Bounce pass to Logan. Nothing there. Right back to Perkins. He's going to drive and dish it off to Richards who's outside the key near half court Jack Logan passes up the three point shot looks to drive baseline it's a foul on the floor and it's only the 16 foul for Wellsville so they'll inbound the ball on the baseline and it looks like they're calling it against Dylan Alsup Alsup the junior for the Tigers it's his first foul. Louisiana inbounds. Jack Logan gets it. It's going to drive into the paint, put up the runner. It falls. Another two points to give six in the fourth quarter for Jack Logan. 47-40 is the score. Seaball now. Spin move as he looks to, to post up from about eight. Donovan Richards, and he knocks down the two-pointer, keep it a five-point game. 
Jack Logan at the other end from the left elbow knocks one down. He's got eight points in the fourth quarter. Louisiana's back up by seven with two and a half to go. Timeout. The Bulldogs lead the Tigers. You're listening to area high school basketball action on Eagle 102. This is Tracy Brookshire with Pike County Health Department Home Health and Hospice. Did you know our agency currently offers over 30 programs and services to our communities? The Women, Infant, and Children's Program, Infant Through Adult Immunizations, Car Seat Safety Courses, Diabetes Counseling, and of course our amazing Home Health and Hospice programs, just to name a few. Learn more by visiting our website at pikecountyhealth.org and see what services you and your family could benefit from. The most complete coverage of high school sports on Eagle 102. Brought to you by Mid-America Auto and Towing, the Mercantile Bank, and Pike County Mutual Insurance. 49-42 the score with 2 minutes and 39 seconds left to go in this ballgame. The Louisiana Bulldogs lead the Wellsville Middletown Tigers. Seaball, the senior, uh, seem, you know, seems to definitely be looking for his oh, shot yeah. every time down the court. Yeah, you know, his leadership out there is showing, you know, it looks like that he's trying to pick up where some of those that graduated left off. And, and it's, a, it's a different look. Again, I said that we saw Wellsville Middletown way back at the Montgomery County Tournament, which was the first week in December. And uh, yeah, I don't quite remember him being as effective, so I've definitely seen him grow uh, since that tournament. Uh, Percival, the uh, junior, Logan Percival, there's definitely some chemistry between the two. Quickly getting the ball up the court. A deep inbounds pass that was collected by the senior, Seaball. He puts up the shot. He's fouled. He's going to be going to the free throw line again. Caps picking up the foul. Eighth team foul for the Bulldogs. Make that the ninth now. First free throw shot up, but no good. He'll get a second. Harrison checking back in now for Perkins. Seaball started strong from the free throw line, but struggled his last few trips. He hits that second one. And it's a six point game. Donovan Richards up court to Wyatt Harrison, back to Richards, who's at the top of the key near half court, loses the handle for a moment, gets it back. Washington swings it around now, left side to Harrison, back up top to Jack Logan. Logan bounce pass right side to Washington. Donovan Richard cuts up to the top of the key. He gets the ball. Logan now tries to go inside to Caps. Bounce pass on the left side baseline, and Caps is going to be fouled. He'll get a one and one. 2-12 to go here in the ball game. Both teams in the bonus now down the stretch. Six-point game with a chance for Caps to stretch that. Cap shot is up. It's good. Ryan Caps with eight points on the evening. Make it nine. As he's three or four from the free throw line in the fourth quarter. Seaball. Goes right side now. Percival in the paint on the right side. Puts up the shot. It's no good, but he's fouled. I believe they're going to tag Washington with that. And Percival's already showed that you can't leave him open for those shots anyway, so probably just as well. Washington collects that foul. It's only the third of the ball game. So Percival goes to the free throw line. They'll actually have to earn both of them. First one's up. No good. So I guess it proves it is already a good foul. And the second up. Missed the second one. Ryan Caps gets the rebound. So, so a well-spent foul by Washington, who at the other end has a nice dish to Caps. And Percival lets loose of some of the frustration that might have built up there. And he, um, he's going to pick up the foul and send Ryan Caps to the free throw line. You know, if you're a Wellsville Middletown you know, fan player, you don't want Percival on the bench. So, I mean, there's a minute 52 left to go in the ball game. The key here for him is not to make any more of those, those fouls. And actually, it just paid off for him as well as Caps misses the first one. Caps got one more free throw coming as he was in the act of shooting when he was fouled. Ryan Capp's second free throw is up, and it's good. He's 4-6 from the free throw line 
in the fourth quarter. The Louisiana Bulldogs lead by nine, and we've got a timeout. 52-43 is the core score. Louisiana up with 152 to play. You're listening to Area High School Basketball Action on Eagle 102. Your car, your stuff, your savings. Combine your auto and renter's insurance with a call to State Farm Insurance agent Cindy Blaylock in Louisiana and let Cindy show you how to put life back in your life insurance. Auto, home, and life. Make your wallet happy. Here to help life go right, State Farm Insurance agent Cindy Blaylock in Louisiana. The best coverage of high school sports on KJFM brought to you by Community State Bank of Missouri, County Market in Louisiana, and Bowling Green Pharmacy. Gordon Sanders, Marianne Everhart from Louisiana High School. The Bulldogs are up by nine with 152 to go against Wellsville Middletown. 52-43 is the score. Curd getting the ball to Alsup. Alsup cross half court. Bounce pass back to Curd. Curd guarded by Harrison. Now he's going to give it up, get it to Percival, who puts it up from his same spot on the right side. He gets the bucket. And the foul as he took, right. a, took an arm to the head at that time as he was going to the basket. I believe Jack Logan will pick that one up with the and one. It's only his second. Chance to collect some extra points with the clock stop for the Wellsville Middletown Tigers. And it's good. Makes the second one. It's 52-46 ball game. Louisiana. Breaks pressure, gets cross court. Logan with the ball to Richards. Back to Logan, down left corner. And a foul is going to be called this time. Picking up the foul for the Tigers would be Alsup. And that's going to send Jack Logan to the free throw line. I was kind of wondering there for a few moments if the dogs were going to start killing clock um, when Logan picked up the foul. Well, that defensive intensity was immediately picked up by the Tigers. Logan's first free throw is up. It's good. So he earned another. He's got nine points in the fourth quarter. Came into the fourth quarter with six. So that free throw puts him at 16 on the game, including 10 here in the fourth quarter. 54-46, eight-point lead for the Bulldogs with under a minute and a half to go in the ballgame. Full court pressure from Louisiana. Seaball trying to break that, lost the handle, recollected the ball, got it in the hands of Alsup, then back to Curd. Now back to Seaball at the top of the key, guarded by Harrison. He's going to look to drive into the paint, spins towards the hole. No foul called. Caps got a hand on it, went out of bounds, last touch by Louisiana. A little bit out of control on the move to the basket. Probably a fair no yeah, call. Probably so. Since they got the ball right back anyway. Wellsville, Middletown. Looking to inbound. Curd, the trigger man. Bounce pass right wing to Alsup. Alsup now goes into Percival. He's found his spot there right on the blocks. And he continues to dunk. on caps. Puts up the shot. It's good on the inbounds. We've got a foul called. And we've got a full timeout for the Wellsville Middletown Tigers. 54-48 is the score. They're saying he called it actually before the inbounds is I think what they were saying. So Louisiana is up by six with 103 to go. You're listening to Area High School Basketball Action on Eagle 102. Bowling Green Tractor wants to change the way you think about yard work with their Ego 56-volt arc lithium battery-powered lawnmowers, weed eaters, blowers, trimmers, and chainsaws. At Bowling Green Tractor, you can walk in and see for yourself just how easy these products are to handle. Bowling Green Tractor, your home for ego. Power beyond belief. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102. Brought to you by People's Bank and Trucks, State Farm Insurance, Cindy Blaylock, Agent, and Perkins Electrical Services. Well, the Wellsville Middletown Tigers have made it clear that they don't want to just go away. Yeah, no, they, they are going to play to the buzzer. That, and, and I tell you what, that's, that's Amor. Am, you know I'm trying to say. Yeah, it is admirable. I <laughs> yeah, agree thank with you. you. Appreciate that. Uh, you know, they, they're they not going to let this. This is a conference game. You know, they they want that conference win, and, and anything can still happen with a minute three to go. The Louisiana Bulldogs will be inbounding the ball. Jack Logan with it. Yeah, you got to hold on, gentlemen. You can't just run onto the court as a sub. you got to wait to be called in. The junior, Jacob Mandrell, still on the court. Louisiana inbounds the ball. Logan to Wyatt Harrison looking to break the press. Stolen away 
by Wellsville Middletown. Driving, putting the ball up off the glass. Is good that time was Keaton Marshall with his first points of the ball game off the big steal. And that is why we said that anything can happen in that last minute, th minute three. Quickly, the Tigers foul while Louisiana's trying to break the press that time. Jack Logan going to the free throw line. Louisiana up by four with 49.5 seconds left on the clock. Jack Logan's first one is up. It's good. With a chance to add another. That's up and as good as well. So 12 points in the fourth quarter for Jack Logan. Bulldogs up by six, 56-50 the score. Seaball looks to drive, loses a handle. Curd comes away with it. Bounce pass now in the hands of Percival, but he's on the left blocks. Shot put up, partially blocked by Jack Logan. Mason Washington tries to corral it. Goes out of bounds, last touch by Louisiana. It was the shot by Dylan Alsup that Logan got a hand on. Nathan Perkins back into the ball game for Louisiana. Caps, Logan, Washington, Perkins, and Richards on the core, on the floor right now. Inbounds pass to Alsup. And the cup now off. Just an off three-point shot put up by Seaball. It was no good. He's trying to maybe draw a foul. Puts up another three-pointer. It's no good. Washington gets the rebound that time. And, and we've got a foul called on Percival. So we'll walk to the other end where uh, Washington will shoot a pair of free throws. Wellsville Middletown not looking to waste any time on the clock before getting mm. the foul shots in. 56-50, your score, 18.9 seconds on the clock. Louisiana on top of the Wellsville Middletown Tigers. Mason Washington puts up the shot. It's good. And he will have one more coming. Ryan Capp's going to take a seat. Wyatt Harrison into the ball game. Washington's next shot is in and out. No good. Curd with the rebound quickly across half court. Three-point shot put up off the rim. No good. Fighting for the rebound. Getting it momentarily is Seaball, who then throws it off of Donovan Richards out of bounds. Because he had nowhere else to go with it. He had nowhere it. else to go with it. 7.9 seconds to go. Quickly into Seaball. Seaball puts up the three-point shot off the rim. No good. Hustling for getting the rebound is Curd. Curd has his shot blocked by Washington. As time expires, Curd heads to the floor. The buzzer sounds. The game's over, and Louisiana wins by seven. 57 to 50 is the score of the Louisiana Bulldogs defeating the Wellsville Middletown Tigers. Your post game show is on the way with Eagle 102 Sports. The Eagle 102 post game show is coming up. Is it time to renew, redo, or rebuild? I'm Christine Rutherford, and we have loans designed specifically for repairs and renovations, along with home equity lines of credit. People's Bank and Trust, member FDIC, equal housing lender, MLO number 421603, NMLS number 407724. One multi-sports complex in Bowling Green is your year-round indoor facility to get your softball and baseball work in. Call Courtney at 573-324-2193 or Matthew at 573-324-8282 to schedule an appointment and to inquire about memberships. One multi-sports complex just off VFW Road in Bowling Green. When you support a locally owned pharmacy, you're contributing to the growth of the community. The dollars you spend stay right here to support our local community. HealthMart pharmacies are locally owned pharmacies. There's one right here. HealthMart pharmacists have a personal commitment to their communities because just like you, they support their community. HealthMart pharmacies are locally owned and hometown proud. Louisiana is a HealthMart town. Family Drug HealthMart Pharmacy. The right people, the right price, right downtown. Health Mart, caring for you and about you. Bringing you all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth. Sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. Time now for the Eagle 102 post game show on KJFM. The Louisiana Bulldogs victorious over the Wellsville Middletown Tigers by a score of 57 to 50 this evening. So the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers won the first ball game against Louisiana, the game that was a close game 
until down the stretch when they yep. pulled away in this ball game. Louisiana started pulling away early in the ball game, and then Wellsville Middletown made it a ball game. Yeah, they in the fourth quarter the for end, a period of time. Yeah, at the end of the first quarter, Louisiana led 18 to 15. Went to the locker room up 33-21 uh, at the half, and then things started tightening up in the third. They at the end of the third, the Bulldogs only had the lead by five, 40 to 35. And then, as we mentioned, your final score is 57 to 50. And um, you know, the third quarter was costly for the Bulldogs. You know, they really let let the Tigers back in, in right there in the third. Free throw shooting for the Louisiana Bulldogs helped out. Um, had four of six from the free throw line for Ryan Caps, who didn't actually have a field goal in the second half, but knocked down four out of six of his free throws to contribute there. Um, I think 11 points for Mason Washington, maybe a little bit more. Uh, right close. There. I, I, I got close. I had 10, but I know that I missed a couple points in there. I also had Ryan Capps in at 10. A uh, leading score for the Bulldogs uh, this evening was Jack Logan. He sat at 18 points of the ninth. And averages, I want to say, just over 17 uh, a game on the season. So. And had 18 Saved 12 of those for the fourth quarter. Yeah, and for Wellsville, they had two in double figures. Uh, Isaac Seaball had 18 on the night, and Logan Percival was 17. So uh, you can see where a, a good bunch of scoring came from on both sides of the court. Yeah, they were basically the offense for the most part ran through Seaball and Percival. Percival just the junior, Seaball a senior. Um, lots of younger players for Wellsville, Middletown, but you can definitely see a, a core of talent. Oh, absolutely. You know, they made that state run last year. I think I uh, got knocked out in quarterfinals, if I remember correctly. I graduated a, a good group of players, but it looks like it's not going to take them long to get right back to where they were. Yeah, and winning once you get, you know, a taste of that, it doesn't take absolutely. long for that to kind of filter through the program again. Uh, Wellsville, Middletown fell to the Louisiana Bulldogs this evening by a score of 57 to 50, so Louisiana wins the boys' varsity game. We had the um, the halftime induction ceremony into the Louisiana Hall of Fame. There were a number of in, in attendance for that, um, including members of the 1986 Class 2A state championship football team for the Louisiana Bulldogs, Roger Walker. Um, Nikia Shepard and Jason Calvin. Yeah, all all went into the hall for the Louisiana Bulldogs this time. We'll have a little bit more on some of the other inductees who, due to weather conditions, either they or family were not able to make it back. And now there's going to be an attempt made in the upcoming year Correct. to to have all of that pan out, see if we can keep Mother Nature in check next time around. We'll see. Let's take a quick break on the postgame show. We'll be back to wrap things up from Louisiana High School next here on Eagle 102. Hey, this is Ryan with Mid-America Auto and Towing in Bowling Green, and we've got the lot looking good and ready to go. We've got something for everybody's budget. We have a constant rotation of new inventory, including cars, trucks, and SUVs. So if you're out and you're looking for a new car, come by and see me. Mid-America Auto and Towing, just off Highway 54 in Bowling Green, is a one-stop shop. Like us on Facebook or check out our website, midamericaautoandtowing.com. I'm Tylee Mills, the CEO of Pike County Memorial Hospital. You've heard it from your friends, family, and even neighbors. They choose Pike County Memorial Hospital. Quality care from quality people. Pike County Memorial Hospital. Bundle at Pike County Mutual Insurance and save. Ask about the great rates on your personal vehicle, farm trips, big or small, or even your motorcycle and side-by-sides. Stop by and see myself, Corey Buchanan, or Kathy Gam at your hometown insurance company since 1895. Pike County Mutual Insurance on the square in Bowling Green. Follow area high school sports throughout the season on Eagle 102, brought to you by Mike's Tire and Service Center, Yolia Landscape Supply, and a taste of Philly. Well, reminder that uh, Mother Nature did wreak uh, some havoc on the area with area high school basketball for basically the last week, um, Wednesday on. And so there's going to be a lot of rescheduled games. There were games today. Uh, Montgomery County picked up split wins at Clopton this evening. Uh, uh, the Clopton Lady Hawks fell to Montgomery while the Clopton boys uh, squeaked past Montgomery to pick up the conference win. As you heard here, Wellsville Middletown did the same thing as the Lady Dogs fell to the Tigers while the Bulldogs picked up the win. Um, you can keep up to date on those scoreboard change or on those uh, schedule changes by visiting the scoreboard page at kjfmradio.com, and of course we'll keep you up to date during Eagle 102 Sports. We'll continue to pass along information. Still have lots of basketball left in front of us, including district play, whoop and whoop. we'll we'll break down um, when district brackets come out as far as and all of those district assignments. And, and just remind folks. Um, that Bowling Green last year got bumped up a class. So their districts is a week behind 
everybody else's. Um, I know Illinois starts, I believe, this week in their postseason play. Uh, but bowling, you know, we've we've been so privileged over the last several years that all of our schools have kind of fallen in the same same time frame. But last year when they uh, did some redistricting, uh, Bowling Green got bumped up, so they're actually a week later than the rest of our schools. So, Stay tuned for more information. Follow Eagle 102 Sports. Stay connected by keeping your dial set at 102.1 FM and online anytime at kjfmradio.com, KJFM Radio app. Alexa, lots of opportunities to follow along there. Again, congratulations to the Wellsville Middletown Lady Tigers who pulled out a win against Louisiana in our first game of the evening to all of the Louisiana High School Hall of Fame inductees, uh, past and present, and also um, congratulations to the Louisiana Bulldogs who pulled out a 57 to 50 victory against the Wellsville Middletown Tigers in our nightcap. All right, thanks to Brennan for running the boards for us back at the station. For Gordon Sanders, I'm Marion Everhart. You've been listening to Area High School Basketball on Eagle 102. We've been listening to Area High School Sports on Eagle 102. Join us each week as we bring you the best of Area High School Sports on air at 102.1, online at kjfmradio.com, and on the KJFM Radio app. You can find a full recap of scores online and daily during Eagle 102 Sports, all from your area sports leader, KJFM Radio.